go, I see things with my eyes on the screen. <laughs> Is that an Irish lullaby or uh, something? No, that's my, uh, what was it, the, uh, the shitty starts I give to every podcast. So, oh, okay. guess what? It's, it's your, the Trigger Man Podcast it's episode your, your 13. Jingle, your jingle. <laughs> theme song. Yeah. The Trigger Man Jingle Wingle. Uh, to anyone watching here on Instagram, hi, but we're not going to be talking to you, but feel free to listen and if you can't hear correctly tomorrow it'll be on the youtube channel and uh, that camera is the more important one so oh. that's the one you'll be looking at yourself tomorrow when you're listening to I'm yourself i'm gonna watch it now what'd you say inception, inception. <laughs> <laughs> i was just notified ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages now that the the trigger man podcast has blown up to like about a hundred subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting like Good. four or five hundred views now. That's great. We're welcoming them. Welcoming them back. Mr. TJ Frost. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah. Yeah. That's Episode. Sponsors for our Armenian guests. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't speak <laughs> French. So. Um, yeah. The last time you were on the third one and probably third. He, he said third Jesus. one. Here we go, go on. again. Uh, and probably one of my more favorite ones actually a funny story uh, we've already been we've been hanging out for probably two hours already and we went on a little bro date and had dinner and all those timely th- things and we've already been talking so if we haven't left to talk about i have no idea but or so- or more likely you're <clears throat> you'll be thrown into the middle of some deep conversation yes <laughs> that you have no idea of where it came from there you go that that, that could be it's quite possible it's very possible but someone from I, I I can't believe I didn't already tell you this. So someone from Ireland of all places, actually uh, Dan, his name Dan Pearson. What's up, Dan? I know hey. you're listening, but he's he's like he's cousins to the guy me and Ben who we used to live with, and we used to start bands and watch DVDs when we were younger and drink really? beers and all those awesome things. Anyway, so in Ireland there are people listening and i was like oh i didn't know if anyone was listening until like Dan reached out and he was like oh dude i've been listening to the podcast it was cool all that shit blah blah blah. Nice. Was, Love TJ's one. Like, hey, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so I was like, yeah. West side. West, West side. <laughs> so, uh, West side. Um, so I was like, holy shit, people are actually listening to him. It's cool. cool. And when I went on, the, <laughs> yeah, I was people like, people actually listen to him. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's weird. weird. But, uh, and when I went on that tour um, with Ashley like a few months ago, wasn't playing, was just hanging out, working away, and people would come over, like, they'd, they'd like know, know me and the city band or whatever, but they were like, dude, fucking love the podcast bro like, nice. i was like that's the first time i was like ah i'm a somebody I, i'm a somebody <laughs> not at all but i don't know i like it it makes no it's, it's good fun. man it's fun you get people writing in questions and shit for you yeah well they're like probably that. doing it right now but yeah. they're, they're like who the fuck's that guy yeah. or whatever what like does that, that guy got to say i don't know but don't that's know. well we've a lot to say i guess because yeah. we've been talking for two hours that's true we're talking about some fun stuff but that's the one thing that i noticed um, if I'm ever around you or any of the the, guy, the Buffalo Connection guys, yes, Steve, that Steve. the conversation's never lacking in anything because there's a, a lot of fun opinions Thank you. been thrown yeah. about. So well, when when you suffer in the the vortex of despair for as long as we have, <laughs> you know it's uh, you know you get a lot of time to think when the winners come and uh, you know freeze you to death inside no so. i have no sympathy at all i don't fuck <laughs> i was like no look there's there's this place called southern california yeah come to visit god damn right it's you the truth really, truth yeah but we were talking i uh, know like tj was telling me i'm talking like there's someone else in the room like steve steve tj was telling me like about yeah. the, we were going through all like the back stuff and all like that because like i don't i didn't post too much about it just but i am going through some fucking yeah, stupid Jimmy's got shit. shit to put out, but his back is fucked up. So be <laughs> be patient, man. Yeah, this yeah. dude's working over. I'm here. like 82. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> I'm about to break a hip and like whatever. Yeah. But you were running me through all your like surgeries and injuries and crazy shit that you yeah. were done in Mexico. And you actually mentioned on the way in here, you did your neck. You didn't say you did your neck. Oh right? yeah. Well, I had. Um, anyone listening, you know, I would say this that. My experience is unique to me, you know, but um, nonetheless was pretty shitty and an eye opening experience of being a white male, whatever, in the United States that's been a taxpayer and whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I had two herniated discs in my low back. Um, I was basically told by the ACA, which is the Obamacare, that I. um, Thanks, Obama. Yeah. 
that uh, after after them asking me two questions that they had already determined that they wouldn't that I was going to be ineligible for insurance that they wouldn't they deny my application over the phone right? over the phone yeah. uh, based on medications that my physician had me on yeah. and uh, and when I said no you know I don't need to take them then I will, I will take you know because I only take them as needed and uh, she's like no nah, we'll we'll deny your application. But in the same breath, you know, yeah. mind you, at that point, I, you know, my leg was atrophying. I had the onset of drop foot syndrome. What um, is that? I didn't ask you earlier. So basically, as your leg atrophies, you know, the, the, what, essentially what happens is like with low back issues and depending on what nerve is being impinged and, you know, pressure is on the nerve, it, it diminishes the signal that's sent to the muscle. And so the mus muscle then begins to die. You know, it's not getting the the action or the nutrients or whatever yeah, the yeah. fuck is happening. But the signal basically stops going to that muscle, and the muscle just shrivels up. You know, because it's like so. At that point, um, with drop foot syndrome, once that muscle is shriveled up, then you don't have any muscles to hold your foot up, and it'll just Blink. dangle. Yeah, yeah. You know, so then you need to wear a brace to awesome. hold your foot up while you walk. You know, the okay. rest of your life. So. And crutches or whatever yeah. you'd be in. So, so in the same breath, after telling me, you know, um, we'll deny your application for insurance, but don't worry. Once you're disabled, <laughs> you're going to be able to get whatever you need, you know. Uh, and um, thank God, once you're disabled. Yeah, like, I, you, so you're, you're saying you, there's you, a chance, <laughs> you know, like the fuck are one you in a million, you know. So basically, I'm at a point where, um, the pain has is I'm has, still laughing at that. Sorry. Yeah, it's so funny. So you know, so so anyway, let, so let's, to, let me draw the picture though. Yeah. You're like you're a relatively healthy guy with a, like a problem that can be completely Look, fixed. I got a door with a broken hinge. Yeah, but just let's weld the hinge shut yeah. or burn the house down. Like, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, burn it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, wait, let's turn what? it. In, let's turn it into a fucking crack house. Yeah, you yeah. know, like. And then once all uh, the everything's broken and fucked, then call us, and then we'll just give you everything for free. Yeah, so right. like, oh okay, oh yeah, we'll move you over to this house now. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, like, that makes perfect sense. Sorry, it's just really funny. Yeah, so if you I know, laugh, it's nervous. Laugh. So, so basically, you know, I said to the woman, I'm like, so your solution for me as a you know 40 year old male, relatively healthy working male, that you you've decided that the best thing for me is that I become a blithe and a drain on society and uh, subservient to to the government for my every need, for yeah. food, for shelter, for medicine, just to exist in a zombified state of fucking, you know, whatever, for perpetuity. But you get it all for free. Yeah, no cost at all, <laughs> you know? So, you know, basically, okay. I was looking at $120,000 in surgeries that I couldn't afford, just waiting, you know, to, to the day that either A, I can get the surgery or B the pain overruns my brain at this point And I stuff a gun in my mouth and fucking, yeah. you know, that end it. Cause I, I mean, I sat too many nights weeping in the dark with my fucking gun at my feet. Yeah. You know, the pain is so brutal. You can only crawl on your hands and knees to go to the fucking bathroom or yeah. something, you know? So, uh, serendipitously, I find this doctor in Mexico that, um, is willing to treat my back with no surgery and, um, you know, through, you know, using uh, ozone therapy and just treating, you know, treating the area around the, the disc, yeah. but not touching the disc, you know. And so, you know, I get on the phone with this guy. He tells me, I want you to bring seven grand in cash to Mexico and I can take care of you. I can help you. So, of course, it sounds like a, a, a perfectly like an logical. after school special is what it sounds like. Disney's listening now yeah, going, yeah. what a great idea. Oh, this is phenomenal. If we add a dog, yeah. we get a yeah. gold <laughs> movie or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. A Pomeranian will put this in the box offices <laughs> everywhere. You know, so. So I'm thinking I'm going to wake up in a fucking bathtub of ice with my kidneys missing or something, you know. But anyway, I'm like, it's worth it's worth the shot. I have no other option. You know, I mean, it's a, life has yeah. stopped. You know, it's like everything is you can destroyed. You know? live, be a complete cripple, but get everything for free. Yeah. Or be a self-sufficient, normal human being that can wipe his own ass and have some dignity. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. Sometimes. So, yeah. So, you know, I'm like, fuck it. You know, anything is better than this, you know, so I 
take this seven grand, I roll it up and fucking two pairs of underwear and fucking stuff it into my pants and get, you know fly down to mexico Phallic shaped i'm yeah. sure so i go into the airport <laughs> I, I gotta go through security check you know i'm like yeah what the fuck am i gonna do i got all this money in my fucking my balls you know what i mean and and the guy's like i i go up to to one of the security guards and i'm like hey listen i got seven thousand dollars cash in my underwear i'm going to mexico for a medical treatment and i'm not pulling it out you know and he's like yeah, just go through. You're good. You know? He's like, you just have a really big dick. Don't yeah, worry, yeah, yeah, buddy. It's yeah. it's. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, no one's got a seven grand dick. I don't know. But anyway, but uh, if you do, you hate it. I'm sure. But uh, anyway, so <laughs> wow. but um, so I get to the airport and I'm fucking shocked, man. My doctor is there, picks me up from the airport. Then I'm there. Gonna I'm gonna be there for still sounds so as fuck. Fifteen oh. days, right? He picks me up every day from my hotel because he's got to pass by. So makes it easy on me. Fucking, hey, beep, beep. Come on. You know, you had your, you know, Chili's Toreados. Let's get, let's get going. You know what I mean? So go to the clinic. I'm there for fucking 30 minutes. He, he does an injection of ozone gas in the back into my, into the muscle around the disc, not even touching the discs. You know what I mean? So. But, you know, alternating each day, he does an injection. And then the last day we go into, we're going into a hospital. So I'm at this clinic 30 minutes a day for 14 days or 13 days. What are you doing all the other time you're there? I'm fucking reading books. I'm sitting on the beach. You know, there's like a fake pirate ship out there. (laughs) I met this guy, Tony from Carson as a little tangent, you know, but, um, so I meet, I meet this guy, Tony, uh, he he called himself Tony from Carson. So he was repping Carson down near Torrance, you know, and, uh, we're in Puerto Vallarta and Tony, you know, we're sitting talking to him, you know, and we talk about all kinds, he was trying to sell me hookers or he tried (laughs) to, you know, tickets for a fucking pirate ship thing. You know, when I, he was into everything, he had some couple gold teeth. He was a, it was, was great. It was awesome, man. We I'm had seen like a small tanned Italian guy with a shirt. No, no, no. He he was Mexican. Hey, all yo, the give way. me a little. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I got like, hookers. Eh, I got eh, eh, so, more like Cheech. Yeah. Okay, big a pink pussy. Probably. You know, he's like he had it. He had everything. Smelly you want drugs? Pussy. You want? You know, I got tickets. Tickets to cats. I got drugs. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so Tony was great, but you know we had conversations. He was telling me, you know, he's like I lived in Carson and all this shit, and then. Um, now he's working in in Mexico at a Walmart, hmm. and he's getting paid like fifty pesos a day to work a fucking you know ten to twelve hour shift. It's probably better than here. It's still, a, it's I don't pesos now. Maybe four fifty and a day. Four dollars fifty. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so, it is a know, third world country. Right? That's why you know people wonder. You know, you can go to why you can go to Walmart, you fat fuck, and buy a two dollar t shirt because yeah, it's being yeah. made by you know. I fuck. fucking hate. Dude, this is my problem, right? Like, like you're in, if you're in a band in the United States, at least you're Walmart, gonna sleep in a Walmart parking lot. But then you're gonna go use the restrooms, and then you, you are gonna buy food in there. I'm like every fucking time. I'm like, God damn it, what am I doing? Like, so it's like, because dude, mean, you, you go, you go to book fuck nowhere. Yeah. No, there's Oklahoma. a Walmart everywhere. Yeah, like there's there's a fucking Walmart everywhere. That's the only problem. I mean, it, you know, it's I mean that's a whole whole nother topic, man. You know, it really is because there's like so many things that go into that. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, but anyway, for the medical for you, Sorry, you know, for, so yeah, you know, just a little glimpse into life outside. Of, yeah, yeah. You know, as you're <laughs> waiting, as I'm waiting to fucking have my back treated by you know somebody that essentially in this country would be considered a fucking witch doctor. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The guy's treating my back for a situation where, you know, in, in the United States, I'm, you know, yeah, once you're crippled, I got you, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I go, now we're in the fifth, you know, the 14th day, and the guy is doing an injection into, into the disc where he's treating the disc itself. Yeah. Turning the disc into a solid, um, not immobilizing the segment, uh, the segments, but leaving the spine to move you know, just all mostly naturally yeah. as you can, you know, as opposed to fusing discs together, you know, fusing vertebrae together and then fucking limiting and causing this overcompensation syndrome that yeah, comes yeah, with yeah. that. So, so anyway, as I'm laying on the table, he's gone in and out of the room now twice, fucking jamming this needle in my back. It's just like, uh, you know, you're on a, it transcends you to a place where you're like, <laughs> You know, I don't, uh, I can't yeah, explain. Yeah, you know, I can't, but, I can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, he, second time and he's, you know, fucking 
gets it in there and he's getting it in between the vertebrae and he punctures the disc and it's getting in there now. And he looks at me and he goes, listen, I have great news for you. He's like, we only have to treat one of the discs. I don't have to treat the other disc. He's like, it's healthy and normal again. He shows me the the film, you know, I'm like, holy fuck. Right. So then he proceeds to tell me he's going to give me some money back (laughs) and winds up giving me back 1500 bucks because he didn't have to treat the other disc. Yeah. Now, my, he didn't have to do that because, like, like we said, oh, job yeah. was done. Job you know, was I, done, yeah. But here, here are these two doctors, Dr. Romo and Dr. Porto, that, you know, they give a fuck about people. You yeah. know what I mean? They want people to get better, you know? Right now, everyone's talking about, like, immigration and all this shit about, you know, people taking jobs and people doing this and that. And, you know, just see, I just seen the, I don't know if you've seen the last Chappelle no. Uh, oh, I haven't watched Stan- it yet. No, oh no. man, it's, it's Guy, on Netflix, he's just right? a fucking genius. Yeah. He's on a he's on the level of George Carlin. I heard there was like people. controversy about certain topics that he was doing, but I'm like, then <sighs> man, don't you know, go to a comedy show to be offended. Like that's you know, you about. know the thing is, man. I think comedians, you know, much like musicians, in a lot of ways, and maybe just artists in general. You know, you get to you get to. You look at the world through a different lens a yeah. lot of times. You know what I mean? And it's like not not for better, not for worse. It's just you just see things a little bit different or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the things he said, he's like, you know, they're talking about bringing these these jobs back. God damn it! He's talking about bringing these jobs back to uh, to America, like manufacturing jobs. And yeah. yeah, fuck, man, why I why wouldn't we? You know, yeah. like we, you can't work out the issues. You know, to make it like somewhat profitable so that a fucking person can no bro do you want to pay <laughs> 17 dollars for a liter of milk or yeah. like oh, shut the fuck well up. well like, what that. Chappelle said he's like uh he goes yeah you know you bring these jobs back from china and then the iphone will be nine thousand yeah. dollars or some <laughs> shit you know <laughs> but i think comedians just have a you know you look at someone like cat williams or you know george carlin or something Bill Burr, you know, I mean, there's so many great comedians and have been so many. Richard Pryor. I mean, it's just fucking Red Fox. I mean, it's endless. You go on and on and on. Those guys, I always said, they're more modern day philosophers. Like they're looking at... Philosophers. Velociraptors. (laughs) Velociraptors. They're modern day velociraptors. (laughs) It's like a Zoolander thing. (laughs) Philosophers. Yes, sir. Because like they're looking at the world and life around us. Through claws and teeth. I got you. It's brilliant. Yes. (laughs) they're flying through the skies i think that should be a show like velociraptor philosophers or something it's just like a fucking it sounds like a muppets jim hansen (laughs) thing or something like that or or timothy leary yeah sure why not but even like just like bill burr because you named them like i was meant to go see him last week oh it was so good oh you were there you missed out it was great bill burr was amazing we've seen him at what the laugh factory i think it was do new stuff uh i mean some stuff that i've heard but you know i mean it's just he did touch on uh, like some of the Me Too movement now and the sexual harassment thing, and you know it's is that a world that is a worldwide thing, right? It's not just because, dude, I'm fucking. What did you just say? Is that that's a worldwide thing, or is that? Oh that's yeah, the I mean, States, I, I think know. somebody in the UK, like maybe someone in Parliament or something, maybe committed suicide over oh, some shit. sort of sexual yeah, I don't scandal. Watch the news. There's things that. happening in the world, Jimmy, just so you Whoa. know. <laughs> I got to leave this I house know. more. I, but, know. I don't know. What, what, what did he say anyway, about the Me Too thing? You know, but, uh, you know, one of the things he said, he was talking about, like, these sexual scandals and that. And it's like, absolutely, man. You know, women get the fucking shaft. And, and there's a lot of, like, douchebag guys in yeah. the world, you know. But of all the things that have come out, one of the ones that I have... It's like saying things that are like, you didn't know that. <laughs> no, like but, well, one, know. Of, one, of the things that, one of the things that I didn't... What I'm, had, I'm struggling with, with the one was with Louis C.K. Because oh, it's like, his yeah. whole shtick is like fucking jerking off and different shit like that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when I find out that he, had, yeah. he was like jerking off in front of a chick, it's like... Yeah, no shit. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. not not surprising. Yeah. Now, if she wasn't into it, yes, big different. There's a problem there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't just do that. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. how you weird. doing? I'm gonna take care of this right now. Then we'll get to reading the script. You yeah, cool with that? Yeah. Like, uh, no, no, I'm not cool. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Oh, you know, but okay. you know, he, but he was fucking funny. But I think you know, I think comedians, man, they just have like Carlin, especially man, yeah. just like a, a depth to like vision of holistically seeing the world in yeah. a way where almost 
eliminating feelings and just looking at it from a that's logical exactly, reason that, pl- reasonable place you that's know? why it's i like, love them like he just like yeah. saw as like what is that as you said earlier it was like bottle of water iphone lies lies yeah, lies yeah. like so piece of shit yeah 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 <laughs> fuck you shinola yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like was a uh um change in words that I've always been the same words forever, but now someone's offended by it. So yeah. it's like, I'm like the best one I remember is like, cause people get upset with words. So we have to change the definition and the meaning and the way it's pronounced. And, and it's like, it was, it used to be vomit, but then it was puke. And now what's next? It'll be a personal protein spill. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's just constantly changing shit. Cause uh, somebody somewhere is upset about something. I, like, I, I, I always love that one bit was, uh, I have a dog, you have Steve, yeah. you know, well, we have dogs, Otis and Ella. And, um, and, uh, so one of, one of his Carlin's bits was, um, owning a pet is like owning a small tragedy waiting to happen. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I always think of, you know, my dog's like nine now, eight yeah, or yeah, nine. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. I constantly you know, say like, it to fucking Ashley is like, cause I watch him, the cat walking out. Like I, I don't, I still, I don't like fucking cats. Too. I just, I love him. He's awesome. I found him. I was at the time very depressed became a little thing that i held on to loving to death and every time i look at him i'm going steve is wearing a sign that says get me out <laughs> <laughs> help me he's like i'm gonna love him and pet him and love him and squeeze him and uh was it anime like so i love you i love you but uh nice uh what was it yeah every time i see because i have that it's not the a morbid sensibility like on like obviously i want to outlive him but I'm like going. It's a you, cat. You, you should have a pretty good <laughs> chance at it, you know. I was like, if you fucking die on me, I'll kill you. Yeah. Like so. He's not a fly. Yeah, I think yeah. they what twenty four hours yeah, they live. Or some <laughs> butterfly or some shit like so. But it, it, that's that. I have to outlive you, Steve. Yeah, yeah no. It's, it, but they're, they're, these are like the sad, cold truths about the fucking. I will outlive you. Or even if I'm like about to die, I'll just yeah. crush his little face in my fucking hand. That'd be the last uh, thing I do. Fuck you. You're not outliving me. God, that's kind of fucked up. I'm sorry. And we're back. No. <laughs> and we edited that part out. No, well, no, but there's the perfect thing. Like, so like, someone's going to be upset now. Like, yeah. You threatened to kill. Actually, dude, I got in trouble one time. I was uh, playing in Denver. Uh, my old band in Denver. I had a band there as well. Um, and every time uh, I just make, I'd say anything that came to my mind. So, like, everybody fucking kill each other. You know, like, you're like, let me see those bodies fucking ru-. Uh, My thing was, all right, I want to see some baby punchers. Because it was like this, like, dance yeah, that I did yeah. like this. Like, yeah. so, so I was like, yeah, fucking do it. And then um, I said it like a million times at a million shows. And I did. Chainsaw a- <laughs> somebody's fucking head off and throw it up here, you motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> this is so church. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a gospel choir, Jimmy. Why don't you just dial it back a Until little bit? Until someone does it. And then you're like, God damn it. Like, so figuratively uh. and literally, like, so learn. But the, I did it. And then this, this I guess. But I'm It's not, hard to figure out what to say, though, on yeah. stage sometimes. You know, you get caught up and say some wild ass shit. But like I say, like you say, Look at scene, Kanye. I want to kick a baby in the balls. Uh, that's the reaction. Though. Everyone's like, ah. And then you, you've engaged and you met him. I, I kind of take like. I'm not a comedian on stage. I just say things just like Carolyn or whoever that are, it's real life shit. <laughs> it's not a joke. I'm just saying out like loud real life shit. Like if you're punk, if you're doing some dance, looks like you're kicking a baby in the balls. Baby punching riffs, man. Yeah, you baby, know, so, like, like, yeah. yeah, just whatever, like kick a puppy in the face. I don't know, whatever. I'll say anything like, cause people do it or whatever. Like if they're acting a certain way and normally the reaction is, ha ha. Okay. We're in it. Let's do this. Then this mom comes up to me and I, I was like, fuck, the one time I, I did that whole shoulder shrunk. My forward. triplets are deeply offended. <laughs> <laughs> they are five. She actually said, uh, you shouldn't say that. And I was like, ooh, don't tell which, me. Which, which. Yeah, which, because I'm saying cunt like in every second. Yeah, word, but it's like, cute so, when you say it. All right, sorry. I'm like, go fuck yourself. Kill that motherfucker. <laughs> go fuck yourself, cunt. <laughs> yeah. See how like, nice it sounds when he says it. <laughs> like, it's like friendly. It's yeah. like, it's like, it's like a, a greeting. It's like, it's like, aw. Uh, but that's the one thing he's like, you shouldn't say it. And I was like, all right, but you can't. It's do, a like, rock show, right? Yeah, you can't do a rock, it's like rock metal show. Like, I'm yeah. like going. There's people with t-shirts on with like Satan raping Fuck people. Jesus. Yeah. Fuck Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is a cunt or whatever yeah, like that. Right. Or just random <laughs> bullshit symbology <laughs> crap. I think I made that word up there. Um, on shirt, I'm like Symbolism. No. Symbology. <laughs> Symbology. Um, what was that line in 
Boondock Saints symbolism or something yeah, yeah, with yeah. Uh, Willem Dafoe. Fucking incredible. I did not like that movie. I'm sorry. What? So like, nah, well, sorry. I, I understand why you didn't like it, but Willem Dafoe is fucking... Which one's that? He, he was... Uh, the cop that dressed up like the Google the drag it. queen at the end to help him. He was the uh, drunk, like, gay cop. That was one of the first movies I was ever made watch when I moved to America. Because I was like, oh, this one's got Irish guys. Yeah, you're going to love it. I was like, yeah. what the These fuck? These guys aren't Irish. <laughs> They're phonies. Yeah. Sons of hey, bitches. I'll go as far as to say is I'm offended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember I went to Ireland in 94 and... Um, had an amazing time. Loved it. I was there with a friend of mine. Uh, well, my buddy's girlfriend, actually. And, going in four weeks again. Oh, nice. Yeah, take Killer. it to her. Yeah, go on. Um, and we, you know, landed <clears throat> in Shannon and did, like, the Ring of Kerry all the way up to Dublin. And, um, you know, great, great fucking time. Yeah. But the kid that we went with, he was, a, you know, Irish, American or whatever, yeah. but... American, you yeah. know, I mean, he's <laughs> American, American. <laughs> yeah. America. Uh, I'm, I'm just going on like a, a real quick, like, because I don't mind if people come up and tell me, it's like, oh man, I'm fucking Irish too. I'm like, that's look cool, man. What's your passport say? No, you're not. Yeah. Goes, well, it's American. Okay, so you're American? <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like a debate. And when they're drunk, it gets even harder. I'm yeah. like, going, you're fucking fair play to you by years it's just yeah, fuck yeah. So anyway go on it's so uh, funny well I, it's funny because i that's when i first noticed uh like he he had this really nice like celtic cross yeah you know tattoo and that. cultural appropriation but very, whatever very very proud of it and everything and um and, and you know people be like you know and i'm like dude just chill the fuck out just enjoy just relax because the people are great yeah. you know they're like regular people yeah <laughs> they're, they're almost like regular people. Very no, I pale. Had a, I had a fucking amazing time, man. I, I definitely it was beautiful there. I mean, maybe living, you know, living some places different than visiting, Ooh, you know. Yeah. But it's just um, the weather. That's all. Yeah. Well. And I mean, and and if you want to get anywhere more, a little respect about weather, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, hey, look, it's the same fucking shit. Like, well, so, I think we carried the same uh, seasons as Siberia or something, <laughs> you know, so in the vortex. No, that, well, that, there's a, like the the thing about it's like weather in Ireland. I always like it's like 300 days a year rain or something like that. So it's either that's c- all consistently <laughs> shitty no matter what like time of year it is, including summer. It might be nice, or it's like somewhere like Buffalo where it's like warm, nice summers, fucking Baltic, fucking <laughs> snow. But yeah, yeah. it's like, what do you want? Do you want consistently garbage or? <laughs> On off on off on right. on like on. There's no win. Like unless you live in Southern California. <laughs> Best weather, man. It's just Best all the time. Weather. I don't give a fuck if it's Summer. 110 degrees. I don't give a shit. The other so. day I had to laugh. The other day because it, it had been cold. It was mm. pretty cold. It was what 50, <laughs> 55, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. yeah, it probably got down to the 40s. I would guess at yeah. night. Maybe it was where it was you chilly are, out uh, where I was, but um, where I am, and. Uh, and then the other day it was like 81. I'm like, it is fucking hot here. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is going on? It's, it's like, amazing. It's though. only 80, you know. Yeah. I, I turned the air conditioning on the other night and I was just like, what am I doing? It's fucking, it was January. Like, so I was like, <laughs> I have air conditioning on. I am a pussy. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I've climatized. Yeah. I've sold it. I've appropriated the cultural <laughs> weather. I don't know. Um, yeah. In Ireland. But uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great, man. I, I look forward to going back. It was... Fucking killer. Just drink, eat, and go around doing tourist crap or something? Or? Yeah, we... Um, <laughs> funniest fucking shit, bro. I got to tell you, the roundabouts over there. Oh, yeah, they're the best. Oh, man. I First day there. Can't wait. All right, so the, the, to me, this is funny. I've never been anywhere, right? So I don't know fucking shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been around the States at this point, but not out of the country. Yeah. So my friend Aaron, she's like, hey, you know, you should come to Ireland with me. I'm like, I'd love to. You know, she had worked there. You know, doing during the summers, doing like nannying and shit like that. So she was familiar, like, you know, whatever. So yeah. my my grandmother is from County Cork. And, you know, so I was like, yeah, I'd love to go and see, you know, see some shit. So, so your aunt is from Cork. So you're Irish. Right? American. <laughs> <laughs> America. Um, okay, but cool. uh, no, so. So we get there, and you know, when we're on the plane, she's like, you know, Irish people, they're so nice, this and that. I'm like, yeah, 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 right. I'm, you know, I think Whatever. I was living, you know, I don't know if I had moved to New York City at that point or yet. I don't think I had. 
No, I definitely hadn't because I think that was later. But uh, yeah. so she's like, you know, people real nice, you know, this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Right. OK. You know, so we get <laughs> we get to Shannon. We get off the plane and we got to we got time to kill. We got to meet somebody to go like the next day to get our rental car. And we we're just going to drive around, you know. So um, we're standing on the corner in Shannon just talking amongst ourselves. We're like, ah, you know, hey, we got to figure out how we're going to get this and that and blah, blah, blah. And some dude walks by. He goes, hey, Americans. He's like, uh, I could take you to get your car. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, this motherfucker is crazy. This is never <laughs> happening, right? So, and so... And he's like insistent. He goes, "No problem. You stay. No, no. Come on, come on, yeah. come on, come on. You stay at my place, yeah, yeah. and we'll take. I'll take you tomorrow. It's not a problem." I remember pulling my friend Aaron. Is she? We step aside to talk. I was like, "Can we talk talk about this?" Real? <laughs> so we step aside. I was like, "This is not fucking happening." I just want you to know she's dating a friend of mine. I'm like, <laughs> "We're not getting into some hostile situation, you know? Like fucking, you know what I mean? Like Saw oh, Four shit. or some yeah, yeah, yeah. shit." You know, I'm like. <laughs> No, we ain't doing it. You Irish know? farce. <laughs> yeah. They just yeah. keep feeding you fucking yeah. tea and biscuits. Guinness, yeah. <laughs> Guinness. More, more yeah. pints. So, um, uh, so I, I shoot that down. And then the next day, whatever, we get picked up by this lady to go and get our rental car in like a minivan. Yeah. Now I'm in, I'm in like the back seat and I, I could kind of hold each side of the van a little bit, thankfully. <laughs> Bro, a, a fucking roundabout that is maybe has a like an eight foot diameter, right? She's to, uh, to anyone that doesn't know what a roundabout is. It's a circle. It's a circle. <laughs> so at a four way intersection in America, everyone they come to a stop and you can turn right, right on red, which is still kind of crazy. Don't do that in Ireland. But like at a four, you will die. There is no. <laughs> imagine the four way stop and then drop just a big giant circle in the middle of it like a mound. not big giant well a mound like a small little mound yeah, eight foot across but instead <laughs> five of, foot across and instead of stopping you just fucking go and instead of four there's like six entrances to it <laughs> oh, and instead of well. like even not a stop not even a slow down i mean she must have hit this thing at 30 40 <laughs> miles an hour we're on fucking two wheels like going across this around this circle i'm like this is fucking crazy <laughs> it's great. and it was like one after another yeah. she's hitting these. i was like this is wild i can't wait to drive here you know yeah, it's so, the best. It's like, it's so much fun but it, it was cool man i did enjoy driving around there you know it takes a minute to get no, used yeah, to yeah, you know because i'm i'm nervous i rented like a yeah right on red you die oh no you can't yeah, yeah you, <laughs> you're you dead you're dead you're dead <laughs> like don't turn right on red and if you're irish and listening to this you know this already. it's it's insane oh no because i i told uh who the fuck did I tell? I told I told this story yesterday, like the very first week I was in America, and then I flew to California, Hollywood, do tourist crap, move on to the next state. I, I just traveled around, but the very say first vagabond, vag vagabond, <laughs> yes, um, uh, Metallica lyrics, very good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was at the corner of um, our friend Bob's favorite intersection in Hollywood. It was like Highland and Hollywood, where that fucking oh, was. Yeah. Yeah. But now there's the big different the X cross section. But then it was just like light would stop, the pedestrian light would go, you'd step off the curb or whatever. But I was like, fuck it, like lights, whatever. In Ireland, you would never be worried about a car just a, turning a corner on a red light. <laughs> fuck it. I'll just go to step off the curb and not know one again. You can turn right on red in America. It's insane. It still doesn't make sense. <laughs> Stepped off, big G. Not in New York City, though. Hollywood. Big uh, GMC logo stops like about half a foot away from me. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Look in the window. It's Colin Farrell, the fucking actor. And he's like as Irish as they come. Yeah. Like, so, and he just gives so me. So I hear. Yeah. Well, no, legit. I can confirm it here. <laughs> and he just gives me the kind of like the kind of. Oh, I kind of, I accept the blame, but you stepped off the curb, don't yeah. you? Like, you know, it wasn't a light. So I was like, holy fuck, I almost got killed by Colin Farrell, the fucking first what day. What are the and odds? Yeah, well, what are the odds? And I was like... What would you say to him as you were dying in front of his truck? <laughs> well, you, you won't know. He was on this, like, really shitty Irish soap opera. Okay. It was called Bally Kiss Angel. So I just would have went, you're shit, Bally Kiss Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, Take were, that, Colin Farrell. Yeah, how do you like that? <laughs> the, the one you got paid 200 bucks for. Now you're a multi-million dollar yeah. fucking... God damn it. Now you're a real actor. No, I, I, I love... And there's like a thing about... like I, Every time I talk to my mother about that, me, ma, 
my his mother, my mom, <laughs> my mom, um, that it's a weird thing amongst Irish people. And I, of all people that I think have kind of transcended it in saying that maybe not Con- or Conor McGregor is one of them, but like Irish people, if you talk to my ma, she'll always uh, say, it's nothing but a nation of begrudgers, like a nation of begrudgers, because it was always the the small, small country, small mentality, small everything, everything small. Like, well, In Ireland. Yeah, except dicks. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfectly proportionate. Um, but it was always like the kind of like someone succeeds and you give if them... If you the, were 10 foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone succeeds and it's kind of like... Yo, yeah, fair play to him. Who the fuck does he think he is? I'm like, what the fuck? What do you How mean? dare you be successful yeah, yeah, after yeah. your hard work yeah, we're we- and your luck? No, <laughs> and weirdly though, here, it, it's not, I, honestly, I've never got that sense. Maybe it's the people I hang around with. Like, kind of like the guys like you and Bob and all those guys, like they, like I notice and like Matt who I write with, it's like everyone's like striving for their own successes, which is great, but they're also like kind of. Haters. Like, <laughs> They're cunts, oh. like, in a different sense. But they're no, they're all like the the people that I associate myself with. Are always want they want to see you yeah, uh, move forward for sure. and want the fucking like, how are you doing? Have you done it yet? Like I'm like fuck me, like no, yeah. not yet. Well, Take well, it well, easy, my yeah. back hurts. Yeah, my back hurts. Give me a fucking break, Get off like rest. But it's that that it's that was a different thing for me to uh, assimilate into as well and be actually happy for. Like, holy shit, everyone's like the people that I hang around with. Yeah. Like, I want to succeed and like are good well, I people. Mean, you know, Buffalo is a lot like that too, man. I Everyone mean, we, I've met from fucking Buffalo in that gang of people, like the whatever, the, the, the fucking the Vortex Club or whatever. Yeah. It's fucking that bewilders me. Like, so, or well, even, I mean, there, you know, Buffalo, uh, and I'm sure there's so many places like this, but like, you know, a lot of times, like, small. And not that Buffalo is a small town, but like a small town mentality can permeate, you know, and and some people can't think outside of that, you know, or don't want to think outside of it or don't need to think, out, you know, whatever. And so sometimes when people do think outside of or wanting more or whatever, I mean, I see them with buddies of mine trying to open bars, you know, it's like they're successful bartenders and they're bringing tons of people in and then. You know, they decide, hey, I want to open my own place, and everyone, like, just poo-poos them and fucking hates on them because they're like, ah, what the fuck are you going to, you know? Yeah. It's like, well, they're bringing in business. Yeah. So what, Shut maybe the they up. can bring in business in their own place and make their own money. Like, why are you, be mad at somebody for wanting to make a fucking way for themselves, yeah. you know? But it's weird. Like, that's, you know, I mean, I think human beings, you know, we just need to check ourselves all the time. Yeah. You know, we don't do it enough. We need to do it, you know. We need to examine, like, definitions of shit, you know, and just, like, look at stuff in a way, you know, holistically, man, because things don't stay stagnant. You know, the world is always fucking turning, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it, and, you know, and if you don't, if you don't keep, like, updating your software, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's, you know, generation is seen as, like, 19 years or something like that. So imagine, yeah. like, in 19 years, like, all right, here's a new generation, and no one from that generation, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like... I think yeah. it, it might be even smaller now, because I was listening to a thing the other day, and they were like, well, you know, there were, there's the millenniums, the, the millenniums, the millennials, the generation X's, the generation Y's, there was, like, the blah, blah. I was like, wait, what? That's all in the last 20 years. Which, yeah. And I was like, which one am I? <laughs> like, I don't... I don't fucking know. Like, so. I mean, you know, I don't know, man. It's like exponentially, I think generationally, you know, the divide and the drift is becoming more, you yeah. know. I mean, we live on a planet with disparity like none, none before, man. We live on a planet where people live in, you know, extremely primitive cultures and fucking grass huts and mud huts and shit like that. No ex- access to technology, even something that's been around for as long as, you know, it has like aviation, you know. Yeah. Just no access to it. You know, they don't know anything about it, let alone a fucking computer, you know. I'm not sure they care either. Though. That's the well, thing, well like, so. regardless of that, but then on the polar opposite end of the spectrum, you have, you know, people living in space and you have intelligent, yeah. you know, buildings and cities and places like, you know, Shanghai. People on satellites or something. Yeah. <laughs> not aliens. Right. Maybe. People know. living in space. Yes. Right. Yeah. Human I- beings. S. S. <laughs> International Space Station. There you go. So, um, <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> There's someone going, that <laughs> He believes in aliens! <laughs> Kill him! <laughs> yeah. But I, I find it far-fetched that we'd be the only thing in existence. Oh, no, yeah, so, yeah absolutely. You know, yeah. I've just never seen an alien. But, yeah. Not but, um, 
you know, but the, it, it, it's just, you know, I think people forget, man. It's like for the vastness of everything, you know, there, how you can't, when, when you cast legislation or pass legislation or you do all these things that affect people in a real way, you know, it's like, does that person, should they be not considered because they're just not in that, you know, culture? It's like, yeah. it's a strange thing, you know, because of all the things that we do, you know, we still fight over the same civil rights and equal rights things that the Roman Empire, you know, yeah, yeah. citizens of the Roman Empire fought, Empire fought over you know, women's equal rights and things like that. It's like incrementally we made steps forward that are, you know, positive. You yeah. know, life is better. You got some fucking paved roads. You know, here's some medicine. You know, Sewers it's like are here's good. some medicine. But, but we, we haven't found a way to treat each other better. Yeah. You know, like that's the thing that's kind of crazy. It's like you accepted divisionism, and but it's, it's everything that has made everything great. You know, it's yeah. like the... Latin culture and think of like food and art and all these things, you know, so it's, I don't know, man, it's, uh, it's, it's wild, you know, that when you get to a place where not, you know, some people, they get up, they go to work, they get home from work, they drink their, you know, six pack of beer, chill on their porch and that's their life and they're cool with it and yeah. they spend their time and, and that's great. You know, there's no problem with that. Not everyone needs to be this high functioning this and that. I just don't believe that. That yeah. ants in a colony type thing. Yeah. Not everyone's wired the same way. We're not all created equal. We're not all the same. You know what I mean? We don't all have the same abilities. And if somebody's a fucking garbage man, it's a necessary thing. Yeah. We, you need, know? we need that. So. You know, but should he not be able to fucking feed his family? Should there some, be some way to do that? You know? I just watched this crazy thing on uh, on Nazi Germany. I'm, f- I'm fascinated I with World War II. Me too. Ever since it's I was incre- a kid, it's it was incredible. So you know, and there's so many things that you could say about it. You know, so many horrible things that came out of that regime, and so many, so many things that have pushed humanity forward in ways that most people don't even appreciate or understand. Yeah, you yeah. know, and um, the the special I was just watching was like on, I don't know. A, a, AHC or something like that or mm-hmm. whatever but and you know I would I would recommend to anybody any of this shit you see on TV man fucking research it you know yeah. just dial in some facts a little bit make sure you know cuz yeah. I've seen shit on National Geographic or Smithsonian Channel about 9/11 and I'm like that is fucking bullshit yeah. you know what I mean so that's uh, the I always like I do talk about you in those situations like I'm like and now that's honestly what's shut me up in the last year or two as well as I like, kind of like as I was saying when we were eating it's like I don't know if it's true I don't know if it's yeah. real I don't know like I'm talking about like things like I love that you don't mind talking about the 9/11 thing cuz I, I if you don't know TJ is a like a survivor. Is that the right word? I I mean I Victim? guess for I don't fucking know whatever. Wherever. You were survivor. I was there. Yeah. Sur- survivor. I he, was in the building when the first plane hit the first tower. He was there. It all happened. Rewind to podcast three or four, whatever one it was. He'll tell you the whole story there. But the fact of the matter is, anyone on the news or someone else telling me a story about dude, what happened there that day, and I'm like, did it? Because I know, and I was like, no, like, I know a guy that was there and he's going to say different. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, this is what he told me. And he was, th- he was there. And like, I mean, they're just questions though, really. Yeah. You know, honestly, it's just, you know, what I've found, I mean, my, you know, one of my friends, her brother was killed in the trade center. He was trapped above the 106th floor, um, or trapped. He was trapped above the impact zone and, um, and the doors were chained. He couldn't get out. And he basically Whoa. fucking was on the phone with his wife and rode the building into the ground, basically telling his wife, tell, tell my kids I love them, you know. That's and funny. so, and she's funny. never been the same since, you yeah, know what no I mean? Shit. And there's so many people, you know, there's so many things about that day that don't make sense. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and now flash forward to today, you know, if you look back and see how, you know, how our citizens dealt with a, a tragedy like Katrina, yeah. you know what I mean, where you're, you're hit a place with extreme poverty. You know, terrible conditions be before this happens. You know, social conditions, yeah. and then you know now it's like fucking peril. You know, imminent peril. You know, and now and people almost savagely rip each other apart. Mm. You know, but then you look culturally like how the Japanese people. What I seen on you know, on the news mm-hmm. of that where they they were care you know tried to care for one another, tried to help each other. It was very like systematic and and kind of you know 
yeah. done, you know, just in a different mentality of it, you know, but for me, it's like, there's just questions that just don't make sense, you know? And so when, when you look at something like a lot of these first responders and, and workers that worked on that pile, you know, the, the, uh, the, the latency period for an asbestos related lung disease is 15 to 20 years. Mm. But some of those guys, their lungs harden like rocks in six months working yeah. on that pile. And these are people that have fucking have, you know, there was air monitoring happening out there. There were people out there that knew about like hazardous, you know, working with hazardous waste and working with, because there was a giant fucking cloud floating around Manhattan, you know, what yeah. I mean, where just hanging over and you could smell. I mean, it was like this. Anyone that was there, anyone that lived in New York or even around the area at the time, I mean, it. it it was unmistakable yeah. smell, man, you know, and, and Christine Whitman, you know, was on the news fucking telling people she was the, the head of the EPA or whatever. She's telling people, don't worry about this fucking cloud. There's nothing to be worried about. This toxic you don't, fucking You don't cloud. fucking give people the information, you piece of shit. Yeah. The information to fucking care for themselves. You know that a dust mask only provides one time, you, one time your body's ability, own ability to fucking filter air. One time, a dust mask. Hmm. A fucking half-face mask provides about 50, per, 50 times that. Yeah. So you don't even give people the ability during a fucking crisis like that to protect themselves. But then when it comes to this anthrax square, scare, they were telling people to fucking go out and buy plastic and duct tape. Yeah. So 3M's fucking stock is shooting through the roof. You can't keep plastic <laughs> and duct tape on the shelves. But you've done nothing to really help people other than bait fear. Yeah, yeah. You know, and stoke their fears because they're not building hermetically sealed containments with supplied air and decontamination units yeah, for but, their fucking know, mail. Duct tape, bro. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, you know, these situations happen where it's like, I think it's important that we constantly check ourselves, man, and check the things that the fucking... The, the systems that we're hitching our fucking trailer to or the, the fucking person that we're like, yes, man, let's hitch our wagon to this guy because he represents us the best way. Yeah. You know, it's like, you not, know. Not we're, knowing which way he's fucking driving or steering either. Well, you know, one, one of the things um, we, we were talking about earlier, you know, we got into a little bit of like politics or religion or what, what I think it was politics actually, yeah. um, is that... Uh, you know, you get a lot of people that will pontificate and just fucking, you know, rant and rave about politics and stuff like that. But I'm always curious of how many of those people have looked up the dictionary definition of politician, hey, you're <laughs> you know, because on dictionary.com, there's six entries and two of those six entries basically allude to the idea that, you know, it's people that are seekers or holders of office that are, you know, are hell bent on, you know, trying to maintain power more than scruples. Yeah. You know, so if, you know, if that's in the essence and the foundation of a system, then can the system be anything but, you know, but is there a better way? You know, you, you know, Bruce Lee had a great philosophy about water. You know, we may have talked about that before. Yeah. I can't remember, Sounds but, familiar. you know. But, you know, basically he's like, you know, if you take water and you put it in a cup, it'll take the shape of a cup. You take water and you put it in a bowl, it'll take the shape of a bowl. You know, you put water in a river and it can move rocks and boulders and shit. And you put it in an ocean and it can look at a, a tsunami, look at the damage it can do. Yeah. You know, it's like his philosophy also kind of in, embraced in his, you know, in his training, like, you know, Taekwondo. Um, is that, you know, he took from all different things, you know, he took from karate and, and Muay Thai and, and Wing Chun and all these different things. And he knew that they all had something to offer, Yeah. you know, but when we get into a scenario and, and, and that's, that's by and large has been seen to be proven through many different things. Yeah. But then when we get to like dealing with people or like a, a political system or a healthcare system or whatever, I mean, for me, being somebody of I a mean, United States born, you know, taxpayer, work, you know, been working and all that. So you're American. American. Okay, yeah. there you go. So okay, I had to go to a third world country, right? Air quotes, yeah. you know, Mexico. I had to go to a third world country to be treated better by a doctor than I've never ever been treated in the United States nearly, except for the doctor who did my fucking neck surgery. Yeah. Um, that... I had to go to this country for a fraction of the cost 
to the same country whose people are allegedly hemorrhaging our borders, that are taxing our health care system and taxing our school system and doing all this shit. All these Latino, you know, the, these, the immigration problem, yeah. right? But Latino labor has been exploited for what, over 100 years or more? Forever. And, and so now you're at a point where, you know, when, when, I, you know, when the Arab Spring happened and I heard all these, you know, whatever, whoever the political party is, yeah. they're all the fucking same. Matter. They yeah. all work in the same office. I'm, I'm just going to, shit. I, I, it isn't even a disclaimer for me. I t- <laughs> took myself out of any political rants and shit online because, like, the thing is, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, what? I don't fucking know. So listen, man, leave when me alone. I had to go to court one time because I'm <clears> being sued for fucking tuning someone up that really needed a fucking tune up, <laughs> right? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. And and so I get in there, and my attorney knows his attorney. Both attorneys know the judge. They all golf together. They all play. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. what happened? I had to pay this fucking piece of shit five grand. You know? And and that was the best. My lawyer, hey, you'll make money. Don't worry about it. Just pay it. It's like, fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. This motherfucker should have got worse. Yeah, yeah. You know? But they, they know each They work in the same office. It's no different. Yeah. It's oh, a- you need me to pass your bill? All right. Well, you're going to fucking pass this amendment because that needs to happen. Yeah. I, I just want to do that. House of Cards. Well, when I want to watch that because I never, I got into you're it super late. Young boys. <laughs> Yeah. You disgusting yes, that's, bastards. that's exactly No, that's the, the I'll get banned off YouTube now Forever Irish guy Into young boys I don't like Kevin Spacey I like I just like I have the whole Kevin. I love Kevin Spacey Dude man. I It's a shame Because I think Someone like that dude You got all that money You're a fucking Widely loved And revered yeah. guy You're tripping on Some other wild shit Because you could You're into young dudes Go get a young dude yeah, You yeah, can yeah. fucking hire A young dude I'm sure you I'm sure you did any young dude you want, yeah. you know. But I take I take the I take the the Michael Jackson argument on Kevin Spacey, Thriller, <laughs> Black or White, bro. Oh. Uh, allegedly, beat it. <laughs> <laughs> beat it? <laughs> allegedly, Michael Jackson did some fucking creepy shit with a bunch of kids. Allegedly, now, still the greatest fucking pop artist ever known to man. I still love, <sighs> dude. I YouTubed about twenty videos the other day. I fucking Listen, love Michael man, Jackson. Thriller is an incredible album, off the wall, incredible. Everything. He's been great since the Jackson Five. Man. Everything, I, everything. So, it's but, a shame. It's a shame, man. In his personal there's life, there's a lot of crazy, creepy fucks in the world. There is, yeah. and and you know, I tell you, man, I, I tell this to people all the time. You you want to get a little slice of the fucking people that share the world with you? Jump on Craigslist <laughs> and pick a city: Los yeah. Angeles, New York, fucking Vegas, Chicago. East Egypt, fucking Illinois, wherever you want to go, yeah. jump on Craigslist, go through the casual encounters, and just have a look and go through every heading yeah. because you will start to see the motherfuckers that share the world with you. Yeah. You'll be like, that that motherfucker looks like my banker, yeah, you know, yeah, or yeah. she cuts my lawn. You know, what yeah, I mean, yeah. you're gonna that's see- the gym teacher. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing about like the Kevin Spacey man. Like, yeah. all right, he did some again, allegedly fucked up shit. I don't know, whatever. But I'm not gonna stop watching House of Cards. It's fucking awesome art. It's fantastic. I love it. I don't care. Like people worship Charles Manson for Christ's sake. That one I don't understand. But whatever. I mean, look at look at some you know, charisma is a crazy thing, man. Yeah. Look at Hitler. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't German. You know what I mean, yeah. he was. Austrian. Austrian. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't blonde hair, blue eyed. He wasn't six foot tall. He wasn't any of the things he preached to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he sold them the Aryan race idea, and they're like, "He's like, yeah, don't look at me." Yeah. But this is what we're going for. Well, it's it's kind of <laughs> you like- know, or 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 anything. You know, I mean, Charles Manson's a great example. Uh, you know, there's people are attracted. I mean, look at Gigi Allen, man. What a fucking who's that? Shut the fuck up. I know their name. Oh, uh, boy. Jesus, we're, wow. We're going to have another. Right. Uh, we're going to teach we'll Jimmy about Gigi. Our... Your, your one phone is dying. Oh, whatever. It's all good. Um, no, he was. Uh, Gigi Allen was a, an artist. His, his brother Merle, actually, I think the murder junkies may still play. Um, he played with a lot of. He had. It was, strangely, man, he's had like crazy people playing his band. Yeah. He's dead now, you know. Um, he was like a punk. Rock and roll punk I know artist, I know but he he would. I mean, he was notorious for attacking his crowds. He'd play naked, hmm. like throw shit around, like cut himself. He attacked the audience. I mean, all all kinds of shit. But you know, there's some songs that he had. You know, I'm like 
as a writer, as like a songwriter, yeah. fucking on point. You yeah. know what I mean? His delivery might have been a little fucking kooky for people, and he always threatened to kill himself on stage on Halloween or, you know. I mean, he's involved, I think at one point the FBI might have been following him for, like, it's burning somebody. Good or, press. Nah, this dude used to tour, like, using a Greyhound bus and just show up looking for fucking band members. Like, he got, yeah. he's definitely worth checking out, um, you know, and loyal music lovers and yeah. fans, you know what I mean? Like, great, you know, it's... Charisma is a wild thing, man, you know, because it can definitely, it can like fucking distort perception for people or, you you know, you just never know like what, what that is tapping into for somebody. You know what I mean? What a lot of those guys all have. The one thing I did notice what they all have in common, and I think it's fairly obvious is like, if you start with the majorities and the oppressed, like the, the fucking, I don't want to get political, but like, say like, if I was to start trying to get a following of people with me against other people i would go for the poor downtrodden oppressed people that desperately need stuff that i can make promises to i'm not gonna keep any of those fucking promises but whatever like i can it's well, not that fucking hard either like that's the thing like no nah, I mean, nah, that is charisma it you know it's difficult man is that i think you know when it comes to like a a political system or whatever i mean you wind up most people, it's impossible to vote your conscience in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? For perfect example, you know, this last election, excuse me, people were like, uh, you know, I can't vote for either one. You know, I seen a great sticker. It said, uh, you know, giant meteor and <laughs> fucking like the Hillary Clinton font or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, um, <laughs> you know, if you, you know, the illusion of choice is not the same as choice. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and so... And the reality is, is no matter what, if the system is corrupt and contemptible, then how, how can putting one person in there change that? You know, yeah. so I think you have to really look at it in a holistic way, you know, because you can't solve problems. They're not one dimensional, man. Yeah. You know, it's just not that way. You know, it's like to change one thing, you got to change 10 or 100 yeah. things to even fucking... You know, especially social change. It's like trying to start a wave in the ocean, you know, with one person. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's like it's slow, man. Yeah. You just, you know, you, you have to, you know, pe- it's, it's up to people to kind of figure out, like, what it is they want to fucking do. Yeah. You know, how they want to treat each other, how they want to be treated. I you know, if you can't look at and say, I think it's real fucked up that some dude got choked to death by the cops for selling loose cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. If that's the real story, you know what I mean? And if there, that's what it is, there's my problem. You know, then well. that's yeah. fucked up. You know, if you're killing people in the streets, you know, does, does the, does the murder of this fucking citizen warrant, uh, you know, is, is that warranted? You know, did the crime, did the punishment fit the crime? Yeah. yeah. You know, I had f- fucking cops smash my window out of my fucking car, man. My dog inside the car, yeah. you know, charged me with a misdemeanor for animal cruelty, all this shit. You know, at the end of the day, the perception on Facebook because some fucking, you know, simple fuck was in out in the, in the, in the, um, parking lot and took video of this. Yeah. You know, I run out there. My dog has been in the car 15 minutes. You know, she had already just been walked, had water, windows are rolled down, so she's good. You know, everything like yeah. that. Parked in the shit. You know what I mean? <clears throat> everything to care for my dog, you know. And I get out there. There's 15 fucking cops on the scene. What? I got. A, I have a picture of seven or eight of them surrounding me with their fucking clubs out. Where is this? Topanga. Oh, shit. It's here? Yeah. For fuck's I, sake. So seven or eight cops surrounded me. My fucking hood of my car is up. Wind, the sh- window is shattered. There's fucking glass everywhere. My dog's on the leash. She's freaking out. Flanking in the, in the, out, the outside perimeter, another several fucking cop cars. Yeah. Right? So for a dog in a car... Okay. Yeah. One person and a dog in a car, which was not in any danger. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you, and you're going to understand here in a second, right? So <clears throat> I'm like, I get out there. I'm fucking furious. I'm trying to choke back rage. Yeah. I'm ready to fucking fight these cops and I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm going to lose, but I'm, I'm in my mind. I'm like, I have <laughs> to, I'm going to maim these motherfuckers as many of them as I can. Yeah. Yeah. So in their infinite wisdom with a car, a, a Lexus RX 350 with the windows rolled down three to four inches. I have a pit bull. So I didn't, you know, how far do you roll it down before some fucking nitwit sticks his hand in yeah, your window? Yeah, yeah. And then your dog's getting put down because, oh, I didn't know it was a pit bull. Yeah. 
okay. you know, you simple prick. Yeah. So, um, so I'm standing there. I get, you know, I get up. I'm like total, like fucking shock, man. You know, I'm going to buy some map gas and valves so I can sweat some pipe. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's fucking, I come out and here's my dog. So long story short, they caused as the cop is reading me the riot act, like I'm a fucking gangbanger dog fighter. Tell me what a fucking piece of shit I am, you know, for leaving my dog in the car. I said, what are you out of your fucking mind? I said, how long do I said, how far do I roll the windows down? She's like, it's not even like you rolled them down. <laughs> it's not even like, <laughs> you know, so then, <laughs> and I was like, listen, lady, you know, I said, let me tell you something. I love my fucking dog. I said, when my dog takes, I said, I take care, better care of my dog than most people take care of their fucking kids. So my dog takes a shit before she comes in the house, she gets her feet wiped and her ass wiped. You know, I said, my dog has insurance. I don't fucking have insurance. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so one of the cops comes over and he goes, hey, listen, why don't you know, just get out of here or whatever? You know, I can see you obviously take care of your dog or whatever. I'm like, where the fuck were you 20 minutes ago? <laughs> so ever since then, they caused, you know, post-traumatic stress to my dog. Yeah, yeah. She hears a noise even to this day. And this is a handful, you know, a few years back now. Yeah, yeah. She'll fucking tremble uncontrollably for fucking 20 minutes. Right. She can't, just can't take it, you know? They caused $5,400 damage to my car. For a fucking window. Charge, charge, me, charge me with a fucking misdemeanor for animal cruelty, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and there's nothing you can do. I talked to an attorney. I talked to three attorneys. The attorney said, listen, man, it's fucking LAPD. They don't give a fuck about you and your dog. Nah, they don't. He's like, they're killing people in the streets. They don't care about you and your dog. Like, what, so what do you do? Yeah. No. You know what I mean? It's like, it's tough, man, because there's no easy answer to these things, you know, but things aren't always black and white either, you know, because in the Facebook, you know, my, two months later, my buddy, I'm talking to him, he goes, he goes, hey, uh. You know, I'm telling the story. He goes, I just heard about this. He says, shut the fuck up. He goes, no, I'm telling you. I said, I just read about it on Facebook. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he sends me the pictures. It is me. It's a picture <laughs> of me surrounded by the fucking cops. I'll find it. I'll send uh, it to you. Hilarious. Surrounded by these fucking cops with their clubs out, ready to fucking beat the fuck out of me. You know? Amazing. And I'm like, you couldn't call me over the fucking PA? Yeah. I'm like, oh, we tried. We didn't. He'd be like, woo. Uh. Oh, yeah. your dog I, is crying. You're like, what yeah. the fuck? It, it's crazy, yeah. you know. So the, them protecting and serving, you know, they're, in their infinite wisdom, they felt it was better to, you know, shatter millions of pieces of glass into my dog's face yeah, yeah. where they could have blinded her, killed her, anything like that. Yeah. Instead of, like, fucking taking their electric Slim Jim, fucking popping the lock because the window was open, yeah. open uh, the door. Uh, I, 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 you know what I mean? It's uh, just like, there's... So I, I get that you're reacting. You know what I mean? But isn't that an excessive use of force? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the guy said to me, he goes, you know, one of the cops, he goes, you think we only come out for babies in cars? I was like, listen, man, if you think I am not grateful that you came out for a fucking dog in a car, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but you don't think this shit is crazy? Yeah. You don't <laughs> think 15 fucking cops is a, a little excessive? That's insane. And he's just like, you know, I've talked to friends of mine. I got a buddy of mine, Nitro. Um, you know, he's like, Shout he's nitro, nitro. He, uh, <laughs> he, you know, he's read, he, he was, I was telling him about this. He's like, you know, he read things in magazines where they're lowering, lowering, uh, lowering the IQ test for cops. For what? Cops? Yeah. Get into the cops? Yeah. And he said, and why, why would you do that? Why would you think that that's a good thing? You know, people say like it's affirmative action or it's this or that. To me, it seems a little bit more dastardly, man. Like. You know, simple people are easier to control. They did something in Ireland a few years ago where they res there used to be a height restriction. Like, because, you know, that's, that's a, as far as I'm concerned, my humble opinion, <laughs> like, that's a good thing. Like, but then they took it away because I No get more leprechauns. <laughs> <laughs> we got enough. <laughs> Dude, as far as I know, to this day, there is no height restriction to get into the Gardaí, it's called. Mm -hmm. So, a four foot two, 90 pound man or woman can become a guard like a guardie a part of the guardie or police force and yeah. i'm like going uh in an emergency situation where there is something fucking happening like i look man i'm not saying a hundred pound person can't 
sort themselves out but in in just in the place of an emergency or something that's going on like so let's use physics to to uh bonify this like so like a 200 pound sturdy force is gonna help me in a situation where if it's like a violent act or a fucking like, what about ferrets that run wiring oh my god <laughs> no that's for plumbers uh, well i'll tell you this man i grew up around criminals like family i mean shout out buffalo hey 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 <laughs> no i mean serious criminals like fucking criminals like fucking yeah. bank robbers and fucking hardcore shit okay. and um my m- one of our family friends was in prison with the guy from amityville that chopped up his fucking family Wonderful. i mean like yeah <laughs> okay. so um so these two guys they were family friends and they were close and we were always around them but they were professional thieves. That's what they did. Yeah. And they will go into places. They're robbing a fucking place or whatever. And if the cops show up and they had to fight their way out, they fight their way out. Yeah. One guy's a 50-something-year-old man. The other guy was like 30-something. And let me tell you, man, I watched the one dude, Mike, lift a fucking engine out of a car with a chain around his neck. Okay. He stood on the fucking car with a chain around his neck and pulled the motor out. <laughs> so... Just different people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Get a fucking cherry picker, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. they have yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he tells me this one story. He comes home the one night and they're all like fucking amped up and jazz. They just came home on two stolen bikes. They're grown men, you know? Yeah. And uh <laughs> they just kinda stopped themselves. <laughs> so they come in and it's all crazy and they're like they're in a place, they're robbing a place, the fucking cops show up on the scene and you know, guy, girl, you know, man, woman, cop. Yeah. Dynamic, you know, duo, yeah. you know. They're in this place. They're about to get caught. So what do they do? They got to fight the fucking cops. Yeah. Guess what? Mike fucking knocked the chick out. <laughs> she was a small cop I'm and he so fucking hard. blasted. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm only saying it because guy or girl, you know, I have, a, I have a friend of mine that, you know, he's a mountain. He's one of Bob and I's friends. I don't yeah. know if you met Josh yet. He mm-hmm. might come out and visit. Yeah. Shout out to Big Josh. Josh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, Josh is a mountain of a man. I mean, I don't know what he weighs now, but he, at one point, I think he was like six five and three forty. He's a fucking. Be- he's just That's a gargantuan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he makes me look like a gnome next All to right. him. You know, he's like I'm fucking. Fine. Weird. I am actually a leprechaun. Um, but but um, yeah, he's and he's a fireman. Him and his brother are firemen <clears throat> now. When. I think of fireman. I mean, he looks like what you would imagine an old time, old timey strong man to look like. Yeah. That's what he looked. You know, yeah. he had a possibility to be in the NFL. He's just a fucking huge yeah. guy. If I'm in a burning building, I kind of want that dude to come get me. <laughs> yeah. He's carried me home before from bars, blacked out, drunk. You know, <laughs> like cradle oh, like so. over his shoulder, like a fucking sack of potatoes, <laughs> sack of potatoes. But uh, so he throws him over. You know, I mean, and. You know, it's, 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 it's funny, man, because my lady is a fucking G. Yeah. She does shit like is beyond my comprehension, you know, but I wouldn't want her carrying me out of a building. No. And she wouldn't want to be carrying me out of a building. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it's right person for the right job, you know, for the job, you know, but until we can treat each other with the same amount of respect that one another deserve, yeah. you know, and not, a, not everyone deserves respect. Some motherfuckers should be whacked. Agreed. You know, I, there, I, there are shit bags. There are real shit bags in the world that do not need to fucking be here. There's like things like, I don't know, because there are humanitarian laws and stuff, but when you do think of like child rapists or fucking serial killers or whatever the fuck, like, like your boy, who the, 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 uh, doctor for the, the gym, the, Olympic doctor. Is he hey. Irish? No. What was he doing? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were like, what? You're like my boy. What? <laughs> no. Because he said, like, you're, like your boy. I was like, what? Nah. Uh, uh, well, no, yeah. Like, he's not, like, what good? Like, he's, he, like, he got, like, 72 life sentences or something yeah, stupid like that. Yeah, get rid of him. Like, just get rid of him. You're a fucking waste of skin. Yeah. You're a waste well, of resources. Well, the thing is that, like, you're, again, uh, they, these are simpler. You know, I think of, like, you can complain about paying tax dollars for God knows what, but tax dollars pay for guys like that to stay alive. So... And you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars every year just to keep one guy like him alive in a box for the rest of his life. Logically, um, makes um, no fucking sense. Um, unless, unless you are 
I, I would say, <clears throat> uh, you know, in-depth studying the brain to figure out what, if anything, can be pinpointed or targeted to see why someone's behavior if, would, you know, result yeah, in that. Yeah. But, you know, because of the fucking bullshit, it's like, yeah, it's inhumane. It's inhumane. You know, I'm a, I'm a fucking survivor of fucking childhood rape and abuse. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's inhumane. It's inhumane when you, you know, you take somebody's life and you destroy it. Because what happens? It's it's spun. It's not like it's not like just this girl that got raped by the doctor that's affected by this. There's like a lot see? of them, right? H- hundreds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, it's like this motherfucker's cops. a habitual predator. Yeah. You know, so it's not not somebody that is just like, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I feel drunk. like I, yeah, I'm gonna fucking diddle or finger bang some young kid today yeah, yeah you know this guy is a you know not that any of it's good no. i mean this guy was a, a like a fucking it's ingrained s- in him it is yeah, who, it, it is him like. he's unhelpable man yeah. i mean and, and and to what what end you know what i mean because you know this girl her father the families there were all these people it, it's like all these lives get fucking affected by this yeah. You know, and not everyone can come back from it. Not everyone can deal with these things the same way. Yeah, I watched you the dad video in court. And yeah, I, I wish he would have got his fucking hands on him. They should have gave him five minutes alone yeah, with that yeah. motherfucker. Just you in know? a room, like let yeah. him go. Like, because they, 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 these are things. Like again, it doesn't, it doesn't apply to the rules of society now. But the, it just to yeah, me. Yeah, but these rules. Somebody, makes sense. somebody made these rules up thousands of years ago. These rules are being made up. Yeah. You know. But life changes, situations change, things change, and people should fucking update. Yeah. You know? Goes back to because, that. Because, you know, because what? The, so that the governor of fucking Michigan knowingly poisons his fucking, you know, his po- population of his state with fucking lead, you know, a neurotoxin like lead poison water for two, almost two years before yeah. anyone, most of the country even finds out about it. And it's like, what? Because they're poor? They should be treated. These are fucking people. Look what's happening in Puerto Rico, man. Yeah. These are American citizens. And it's like, fuck it. You know what I heard now? <laughs> that, yeah, well. you, know, you know what I heard now that, and who knows, man. It's, I, I heard that this happened in New York, fucking with Giuliani. Uh, drive, you know, they drove, you know, the value of fucking land dropped around like Times Square and all this stuff. And yeah. then they had the cops out in the streets fucking killing people, man. Driving them the fuck out of the area and all the fucking land value went back up. And they made gobs of cash now they're saying that these people are going in and buying trying to buy up all this land in puerto rico for penny, pennies on the fucking dollar because it's like yeah it's worthless it's right now like, yeah. and then what i mean you know it's like what kind of people do you want to be yeah you know what kind of world do you want to live in you know what i mean like it, it's if you don't challenge it you don't change it you know chuck d you know he's like if you on, on the, I think his album, he had a, one of his choruses was like, uh, "If you can't change the people around you, change the people around you." Yeah. You know, it's like you, you got to just keep striving for better, man. I think you know as best we can. You know, you look for new information, try to fucking talk to people, because at the end of the day, man, I think most people, like we said, man, they want all the same shit. Yeah. You know, they're not trying to fucking. No, that's what what you just, what it. you just said is kind of what I've been definitely working on the last year, like the whole. Like if you, well, if you can't change the people around you, change the people around you. So yeah. like one, I was like, holy shit, that's what I've been Chuck doing. Chuck D, man, fucking oh, philosopher, bro. No, but there you go, another yeah. again, another velociraptor. Yeah, uh, he is a velociraptor <laughs> of the modern day. But that's <laughs> like he's a philosopher rapper. It's it, it's a, I think there has a there's a big thing. I I think shame should be used more. I think um, uh, embarrassing shame, shame, not Shane. shame. <laughs> <laughs> no but like just like there's a there's a, things like just things like shame that like we can use like we, we there's sometimes you need to be embarrassed like when i was in school a teacher would embarrass you if you got something wrong or did something wrong and i'd be like okay it is embarrassing but uh, dude i used to get beaten in school and i'm talking like the fucking 90s like that's yeah. like not even that's barely 20 years ago like so i'm like but Guess what? None of us ever stood up in a classroom and threw a chair at a teacher, though. Like, the, and there's a reason for it. Like, so there's certain lessons in life that kids, I especially think, aren't being taught, or like younger people aren't being taught that uh, being embarrassed is good for you as well. Like, so 
feeling ashamed well, I mean, for something the, that is good as well. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, humility and you know is definitely a good thing to have. But you know, I, I mean, I've been in situations too. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a survivor of you know sexual abuse and torture and neglect. I didn't know you that. know, adolescent. You know, I've dealt with suicide my whole life. I think when I tried to. First time I tried to kill myself, I was fucking five years old, I think, man. Wow. I had a rope around my neck in a tree in the backyard, and my fucking neighbor came out and got me out of the tree. Jesus. You know, because I was ready to dive out of the goddamn tree. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, you know, I've been in situations, like, in school and shit. I've fought all the time, you know, and I, you know, and I think that there have been so many opportunities for adults to to see that there was a problem, you know, or try to... But no, no one was like, hey, man, why, why is this dude so, you know, violent or whatever, you know, or. So, you know, if you don't, you don't have good support around you, you're fucked, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like, I think people forget, man. It's like, we don't, you're, you're whatever toolbox you've been thrown in this world with, you know, you don't have all the fucking tools, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? No matter what. Right. So, yeah. You know, and so if you're fortunate you know, through, you know, some genetic lotto and you found like you got good parents and you had a good support staff around you, people and, you know, all this shit and that great, no medical issues. Not, you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's so many variables, yeah. you know, then good for you, you know, but to, to take somebody that had like a handicap or a disability or, or, or something that happened to them that altered their fucking wiring in their mind so they didn't, they can't process information the same or they don't just, they don't live in it the same as you, you know? To forget that about people is fucked up, I think. I was you know? driving wherever, somewhere in Hollywood last last week and I'm like, to myself, I hate complaining, like, going, oh, my back, my back. It does it all the time. All the fucking time. <laughs> That's all I talk about now. When I'm in pain, I fucking got a bad back and I pull up to like a red light. <laughs> And I look over, too. I couldn't, have, I was like watching because I was at a red light, so I'm allowed to like look around and see what's going on. Uh, two blind people with their sticks holding hands, like, and trying to find the edge. Of, and like, because they kept walking around in circles because they had to tap to find the edge. You of, piece of shit. You just sat there watching them walk in laughing. circles. You, you oh, son of No, I wasn't laughing. <laughs> but like, I was like, that, that's the part of me then that kicked in. I was like, shut the fuck up about your back dude like go fix it you're you can like so whatever yeah you have all the fucking as you said the tools in the world you're you're actually capable you're driving around working yeah like no matter what like i'm not like complete i'm not fucking blind on a curb with a stick looking for the edge of the fucking path like dude. to step i'm like i just it it will stay with me and then they it, honestly man it took them like a minute or something to find one little part of the curb where they could both walk off together both yeah. blind but and i was like shut the fuck just take are you sure you weren't watching uh hear no evil see no evil <laughs> i love that movie that's a great movie how am i doing <laughs> you're doing great it's like <laughs> fuck you <laughs> dickhead um <laughs> what you say <laughs> no I, I mean it's uh Wow, you just totally fucked me up. Sorry. I was what, what, what were you just talking about? <coughs> the blind people. The blind oh, yeah. people. No, so, Humble, blah, blah, blah. So when I was like 21 or 22, I was homeless, living in the streets of fucking Pittsburgh. Yeah. And, you know, for a few nights here and there, and I'm in doorways, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm, You know, I'm, shit's fucked up for me. And so I used to ride the bus. You know, I'd, I'd get on this bus line and I'd ride the bus till the bus stopped running and then I'd find somewhere to sleep. They do that know? here. And so it's middle of winter in Pittsburgh. It's cold as fuck. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, so this bus driver got to know because it was the longest running, you know, latest running bus line. And so was, you usually sit up next to the bus driver and chat or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I remember one night we're in this totally fucking desolate, you know, it's like, I don't know. After midnight sometime, I think it was. It was it was late. I remember it was late. So and whatever it was towards the end of the the line, you know, the run for mm -hmm. the night. And we're in this totally isolated, desolate area of fucking Pittsburgh and this bus is run. It's cold as fuck. And this we stop and the fucking blind guy gets on the bus. And I remember like at that point, man, I mean I was down and out, man. I'm fucking living in doorways in the winter in Pittsburgh, yeah. you know what I mean? I just quit going to the art institute, you know, cause I was like, this is some fucking bullshit. It ain't working out for me, yeah. you know? And, um, stay in school though. Let me tell you. Don't do drugs. <laughs> stay in school. But, uh, 
but maybe that ain't the right one. I don't know. But yeah. anyway, but so this dude gets on the bus and then, you know, we're sitting there talking and then finally, um, he, uh, you know, he hears me talking to the bar the, to the bus driver and he says, Hey friend, you know, can I give you some advice now here? I'm 20 something. I don't know shit about fuck, you yeah. know, and, uh, I'm in a dark place. I'm fucking all fucked up. And, and he says, Hey Frank, can I give you some advice? And he, and I said, yeah, sure. You know, he goes, you know, if you're looking for a place to live, don't rent from this guy, you know, whatever. He's a fucking slumlord or whatever. And, and I just remember thinking like, as dark and fucked up as this place is for me, you know, and how scary or just how uncertain, you know, the future was for myself, you know, that here comes a guy that I couldn't fucking imagine being blind, yeah. you know, and offered me help, you know, and it just, it just resonated and like, like shook me, you know, yeah. in a way where it was like, fuck man, you know, it's like, no matter how bad somebody has it, somebody else has always had it worse. That's the way it I doesn't mean it. that, you know, don't, don't diminish or belittle, uh, the suffering or the, you know, the pain or whatever or the agony that yeah. you feel or, you know, those feelings, but, you know, but at the same token, man, it's like, you know, the world, I mean, the, the wickedness has just been well documented, man. Yeah. We do horrible shit to one another, you know, so. But that, that blind guy, though, by him giving you advice, that gives him a sense of purpose as well. And, like, I talk about that a lot. Well, like I, I stole his wallet after <laughs> this. <laughs> I was like, get out of here. Give me that wallet, you fuck. No. Give me your money. <laughs> well, no, 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 Where no. are you? Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You piece of shit. It's like swing a stick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, we're going to hell. Well, no, that, I talk about that a lot. It's like, it's fine. When? When? What? <laughs> what did I say? We're going to hell. All right, yeah. When we're going to hell. The, um, it's having a sense of purpose and ha knowing a... Because like, honestly, that's the only thing that kept me fucking alive, man, for a long time. Is like going, even if it was just convincing myself of, uh, I'm really good at something and I, I need to do this and then I'll it'll resonate with other people. And I'm just talking... Like like about music or something like that. Like I I don't know how I even feel anymore. All I know music now is music or music. Music. Ah, it's music, bro. Sick. And where like it like that gave me my sense of purpose and like I knew when I did it, people wanted to talk to me and I wanted to talk to them. Whereas like normally I don't want to fucking talk to anybody. Leave me alone. Like what do yeah. I want to do? I'm like nah, leave me alone. Fuck off. Leave me on a normal day. Just leave me alone. Everyone leave me alone. I'm totally cool. <laughs> Um, but with that, it gave me a sense of purpose and a reason to fucking go outside and do something and like, and then, oh, I'm feel alive. I'm positive. I'm happy. I'm like, oh, I don't want to fucking jump in front of a fucking train today yeah. or something like that. Like, it's a really nice feeling, like just to have something stupid. So getting on a bus blind. Hey, and he's like, hey, friend. I'm like, I'm over here. I'm like, yeah. oh, hey, friend. Like, you know, just it's something to feel well, that you've done with your day. Well, I, you know, I think that, you know. It's important to always remember how connected we are, yeah. you know, and, and how, how symbiotic our existence is to other people, you know, and I'm, I definitely struggle with things myself, like in the sense of, I don't think I'm agoraphobic in any way. Cause I mean, I like going out and having a good time, but I don't, I don't do it a lot. I don't go out a ton anymore yeah. because it's like. You know, it's just, it's tough to deal with people sometimes and in, in, in ways that society wants you to deal with them because it's not what they, they didn't earn that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They earned a fucking smashed, you know, a broken nose. That's what they earned. Yeah. You know, I mean, people until, until like, like I've, I've had people like do dumb shit and I'm just like, the right choice is to fucking choke you out right now, <laughs> but then I got to worry about my shit, yeah. you know? And so I don't, I don't go out much, you uh, know, and it's not out of fear of anything. It's just like, I just don't want to be bothered, yeah. you know? And I'm, I'm very much the same. And, and so, but it's dangerous, you know what I mean? Because then you become isolated and, and whatever. And, and so I think, I think some of us, you know, that are a little bit like hermit like, or, you know, recluse in a way. I mean, it's, it's good when you have an outlet like music, you know I mean? Both, you know, singers yeah. and that. And, and, uh, he's very talented by the way, in case you guys don't You're know. You're very talented. <laughs> but, um, 
you know, to have that outlet, whether it's artwork, what, you know, art or anything. music, you know, yeah. anything, yeah. you know, it's, it's so important, man, for people to be able to express themselves. You know, I, I was in the studio yesterday working with my buddy, you know, and he said something. I was like, you know what, mother, I never fucking thought of that. You know, my buddy Yuri. Big ups to Yuri. Yuri. <laughs> um, <laughs> Love so, the so um, Yuri, you know, we're sitting there talking, who's a fucking incredibly talented guy, plays violin, guitar player, producer, engineer, like all around, like great guy, you know, great father. Motherfucker. Just good one of those dudes yeah. yeah hit him already yep and you know we're sitting there we're talking you know i'm working on my old band baphomet we're we're writing some new music so i was in there tracking some death metal stuff maybe you know? this will be on metal yeah. like, oh my god baphomet <laughs> yeah no one knows who we are <laughs> um it's the name al- of the first album although <laughs> although i will say dying fetus did cover uh one of our tunes streaks of blood on oh, one real? of their albums yeah oh, and shit. then a couple bands like uh I think there was a band in Italy, Deeds of Flesh maybe covered one. I might be wrong, you know, but there's been a couple people that have covered our team. It'd be so funny because, like, Death Metal is so big in, like, Ireland that it'd be hilarious if people actually knew about that. Yeah. So it does stuff, motherfuckers, man. That's awesome. Stuff. No, That's it's hilarious. Cool. I mean, we're on a, you know, we're on a label of Peaceville, and, you know, uh, we're on Peaceville, so, like, uh, Paradise Lost was on the label at yeah. the time, Autopsy, um, Theory on, you know, all kinds of shit, yeah. you know, great bands, you know, but uh, early days of death metal and black metal. But yeah. uh, you're saying Yuri told you something, yeah. Like, so, Yuri, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you I see like, my eyes. Spinning. I want, no, I wanted to say, I was like, well, yeah. what, what the fuck did he tell you? <laughs> so, he's sitting there, he's like, you know, he's like, I, I think, you know, for creative people, it's the one thing that we can control, you know, when we're creating music, yeah. we can control what. You know, when it's done, how it's going to be done, all yeah. that shit. And it was just, I never felt it like it. I never thought of it in a way of like control. And I don't know if it, if that's part of the allure yeah. of it or something Maybe, like know. that, you know, because my motivation for playing music is different, you know, from, you know, other people have uh, yeah. their own, you know, I, I don't know if I told you, may have mentioned it or whatever, but, you know, for me, like, um, you know, it's important for me to just, keep writing I've, i write every song like it's the last song i'll ever write yeah. and i hope that i've passed on some sort of something, something that is worthwhile to somebody yeah. you know what i mean that's you know uh, and, and hopefully there's some wisdom or, or help or whatever you yeah. know so um you know but you think of it in 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 that sense of like a means of controlling stuff you yeah. know because so much is out of our control you know people talk about you know, being secure or whatever, and security is illu- an illusion, you know, yeah. it's like uh, things, you know, it's like, it's different. If you just look at the world for how it really is, it can be like despairing and just like, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, like, make you a little malaise. I'm, you know? I'm secure. Like, well, if I take away this one little thing, are you still yeah. secure? No, oh my God. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm protected by nuclear weapons. So I feel secure. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you're not going to nah. stop random acts of violence, bro. Nah, you know sorry. what I mean? It's... It so it, it it's interesting when he when he said that it really just kind of like hmm. well, what did he say? That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That it's a, as a <laughs> as like a, a quote <laughs> as a, as a creative person, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's our one one thing that we can really control Man. all all aspects of. No, it, I know, believe it. Like degree, so. So. because there's like the I, I live in the the reality or the grow up. What do we call her? The adult world or adult, <laughs> adult world? Adult world <laughs> or adultsville? Like. I don't know, maybe like I'm getting older and my mind's changing and I don't care about I'm not not really worried about like as I tell like Ashley, I'll him, are you okay? I was like it was like I'm I'm fine. I'm not worried about anything. Uh, and I say I don't care a lot, like because I don't care. I don't care about the weather. <laughs> he doesn't. I don't I just don't care. Like uh, because I don't control that. And it is actually it does actually right. I guess right. fucking make sense. Like um and I live by that rule. I could walk out like in random acts of violence. Like she, like, dude. When I, if we go anywhere, like say, go down to L.A. or Hollywood, or it's late, or we're going, to, we'll go to Ralph's at like fucking midnight or something like that. In a dodgy Ralph's in a dodgy parking lot, somewhere in a <laughs> shitty neighborhood. But fuck it, we're driving by. I need almond milk. Love me some <laughs> almond milk. And like hop out of the car, and there's people, and like in a parking lot at midnight whatever, and she'll get she's a very excitable happy person yeah so she'll like oh my god yeah whoa we're gonna fucking do this we're gonna go got by eggs I'm like whoa 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 shut the fuck up what are you doing <laughs> I like, what what he goes what what he goes no you don't understand you see cute 
small, pretty girls don't get punched in the face. So, and there's a bunch of dodgy dudes Not over true. there. No, 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 no. Look, I've it, seen it happen. Yeah, no, no, they, they do, but not as much as true, true, true. Not very tall, tattooed, fucking guys. That just, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't know what law that is in the in the universe. Like someone decided. Don't punch the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's a good rule, by the way. Yeah, I, I, I'm all for it. Like so, but the thing is, I don't want to be punched on account of you drawing attention over because the world I live in is the world I walk around in, going. I could get smacked in the this face. Yes, yeah, for you, yeah. yeah. Yes. Or like, whereas it's funny, like a person like her or whatever, they like, lots of people, maybe dudes as well, they walk around the world where that could never happen to me. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Everything could happen to always, <laughs> anytime, <laughs> to everybody, forever. Like, it's like, it's never going to change. Yeah. It's just like sometimes people have bigger targets on them or the rules of whatever said society or universe, they like, Hit him instead of her or whatever. I mean, I've been I've been in a lot of cities, a lot of different places, sketchy, dodgy places, cool places, places I probably shouldn't have been, you know. And you know, I think I think that you know, a lot of times there's you know people do have an underlying respect for one another, and yeah. if you know you you conduct yourself in a appropriate way, most of the time you're going to be good. You know, what I'm I mean, cool with and, that rule. You know, but it, obviously it's not set in stone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, no, as I said, when we were eating earlier and I like pointed out the window, I was like, look out onto the street. There's people walking around. How many of these people are screaming at each other, like attacking each other, blah, 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 blah. Mainly because there is that there is. Well, there might, might be partly fear as well, but they're like partly like eh, we're all people. We're all trying to get around, do our thing. Like so uh, but when we flip it onto like Internet vibes or. I told you like earlier when like I try and stay away from oh hey Steve, uh, I try to stay Steve. away from uh, stay away from him. He doesn't like you. Oh, that's <laughs> fucked up. I, Steve, I'm, everybody, I'm mostly potentially uh, yeah, stay here allergic. Me. That's all. That's okay, but it's yeah, the we're still on. it's um it's the whole like kind of uh, uh, the online thing where like I, I told you I got one comment i try to stay away from everything political <laughs> i try to stay away from anything that has like a major stupid opinion attached or it could be invoked from somebody or whatever like that but it was about the whole immigration thing i just know about the immigration policy or like the, the immigration process Fucking in america dirty immigrant yeah i know <laughs> fucker coming over here taking our jobs taking stealing our, our women yeah you're damn right <laughs> um but i just knew what I was talking about and obviously the people commenting on a certain thread just they don't have any they have the set opinion that they were given or the set information they were given and that's as far as they ever went with it and I did accidentally I, I tried to write a nice you started a riot I started a fucking riot by being nice about it. but like the thing the point being like if that was like like just like me and you we can have different opinions like I can say hey that's not correct with, instead of with the argument TJ, you're a fucking idiot. Fuck you. That's not how it happens. This is right. like, whoa, whoa. Automatically, the conversation's over. Right. Like, you know, we don't we don't talk to people like that in real life. So online, when it's like, hey, I like cheesecake. Fuck you, you fucking stupid Cheesecake's cunt. Cheesecake's the worst, you fucking yeah. piece of shit. I'm like, who the fuck's... <laughs> it's like, oh... It, we I, are talking about cheesecake, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still cheesecake, yeah, right? Yeah, and that, that's where, like, I I'm read... Very passionate about yeah, cheesecake. I read these threads, and I get really confused with, like, kind of like what does that person do every day with their lives that they're like, they feel they can go the online. Angriest man ever. <laughs> but, but everybody is still. It's... Mike Santor. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Mike? <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it's just this weird, well, no, like a guy's like, it's a friend of ours, like Mike Santor or any other, like, they talk like that in real life. Yeah. In real life, across a table to a person, that's how they speak. They just, so, but whatever the the law is now, like the unwritten law, the rule or whatever is like that. Online, if I'm having a conversation or a debate, it can be across the table on two laptops. Like I'm allowed to start my conversation with "fuck you, idiot, you know nothing." I know all blah blah. blah. I'm like, no. If you're sitting across the table from someone and they vented an opinion you didn't agree with, you 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 just wouldn't fucking jump across the table and be like "fuck off, you stupid company." Like, Actually, I think blah blah. blah. I'm like, oh, okay. I can engage in this conversation because it's somewhat fucking well. I, you know, respectful. I, I think like, especially when with the immigration thing, yeah. you know, we and we not getting into it, but go on. Yeah, we we talked we talked about it earlier, but yeah. you know, it's like how it's perspective, man. You know, it's like you know, 
perspective is is a huge thing because it it really affects you know when information is given to somebody if it's relayed to somebody how it's presented to them is going to affect the way they think yeah. about it and so if you've grown up you know indoctrinated with an ideology from your family from your clergy from whatever it is you know and you never check it to see like all right does it still hold true today is it still like you know, should I still not like black people because of this? Or yeah. should I be a hateful racist because of this or that? Or, you know, check that shit. If you didn't want to be a hateful racist, be a fucking hateful racist. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But have a reason for it. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a lot of reason to hate people. Yeah. You know, but um, but at the same token, it's like if when you, when you when you have like altered historical fact, and you present shit in a way like Columbus discovered America, right? Well, how the fuck do you discover something that's inhabited, right? So the Native American people are here. Through the door thing. And you that fucking, was... you, yeah, you kick the, it's like somebody kicking your fucking door in and saying, hey, look what I discovered here. Hey, you go live over there now. You know, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I, I live here. I've, yeah. been, I've been here. Yeah. I've been paying rent. <laughs> that's you know? how it like, works. Yeah. You know, and so... You know, like these exchanges happen and, and the exchange of information is an interesting thing because it's like you tweak a word here, you, you change something a little bit there and it, it could vastly alter a position for somebody. Yeah. But, you know, if 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 these people in, in, you know, the Latinos and, you know, coming from Central America that are fleeing, you know, war torn places, places where they're, you know, they're being trampled by corruption and death and brutality and no no fucking no opportunity you know because they lost some genetic lotto and happened to be born in fucking el salvador or wherever you know i mean it's it's whatever the answers are i can't imagine that the correct answer is letting people suffer that shouldn't suffer you know what i mean that don't you know, if so, you know if somebody's a bad person and they've done horrible shit, you know, and they, you know, that that's you know, is that a person that you need around? Is that a is that the kind of shit you want to have happening? You know, but at the same token, we live in a place in, in a world where, you know, good guys do bad shit, bad guys do good shit. I mean, it's a fucking really crazy world, man. You know and. You know, things need to be weighed on a different set, set of values, you know, and scale, you know, because you, it, not everyone's is cut out to imagine the value of one life versus a 10 or a 10 versus a 100, 100 versus a 1,000. Yeah. You know, we're just not wired that way. So to look at, like, an immigrant who is fleeing, like, a war-torn place, you know, if, if I told, if I came to you and said, hey. There's someone listening to this going, you stupid lefty, fuck, fuck it's you. It's not about, it has it's nothing not, to do with that. It's either. not like, about so being lefty. Because I, I I I had, I'm just thinking devil's advocate over here. And I'm like, oh, but I, I had to go, right I had to go to Mexico to get treatment for, you know, medical treatment. Now, in, in this, you know, in the country, in, right now in the country, you know, the, the paradigm exists and, and the, the framework exists with the, you know, the idea that if you're, fortunate enough and affluent enough to afford health care, then good for you. You did something yeah. right, you know? But, you know, there's all kinds of situations and circumstances. And you hear, you know, one, one of the things that's crazy to me is that people always love to lump in the average and the mean with exceptional people. And to be able to say like, ah, look, man, we got a you know, black president, so now every black guy can be a doctor kind of yeah, just stop weird. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't work for black people. It doesn't work for white people. To, I mean, everybody's all kinds of shit. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just everyone has all kinds of abilities, you know? So, but it, you know, borders, these are, these are man-made. These are created. You know what I mean? The world, the world is being destroyed by every fucking culture. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like there's so much pollution and damage and, it ain't about being left or right. It's like if, if, we, if we adhere to our lizard brain and our, one of our most basic instincts is to, you know, to, uh, to survive, you know, but you, everything you do is, is inconsistent yeah. or so many things are inconsistent with that instinct, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
then that's more. I, I'm talking logic and re, I take the feelings out of it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you were born a hateful racist because your daddy was and your granddaddy wasn't. Look at you know what I mean like there's all many there's so many reasons to hate people other than the color of their skin yeah yeah you know what I mean they're just this a good know. ones I call yeah. it like so legitimate fucking good, reason. Yeah, that like, guy sucks yeah, you yeah. know it's like <laughs> no no he sucks but you know I mean it's our diversity that have made the human species great you yeah. know and 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 we have accepted the paradigm of fucking divide and conquer yeah and that's why you know we deal with the things we do today you know yeah. it's it's weird when I first moved here the first thing I noticed when because I was down by the beach a lot or like I travel around and the uh the in places like say Los Angeles there's so many people the the segregation there is fucking segregation Big time. yeah it's insane like it's so well done <laughs> Like there's a mastermind somewhere sitting in a room just going, I am a genius. Because dude, it, it literally like there are there are, I don't know how, how like neighborhoods or hoods or whatever. Like they're they're segregated and hoods, hoods, bro. <laughs> they're literally split by streets. Like and like there's like on one side of a street, it's like it's one type of neighborhood. On one, next side of the street, it's a different type. Of neighborhood. Uh, it's you like, gotta I, go to Baltimore, bro. You go to like, heard, different yeah, cities, yeah. man. You get into Baltimore. And uh, I love Baltimore, man. It's great. You know, but there's um, you get in the neighborhoods in Baltimore where it'll be like track houses, like row houses. And, you know, maybe mm. they're, you know, million dollar condos or some shit for a couple of streets. And then wham, it's fucking like gangland, you but know, just, it, and it's like it's insane. insane. It's wild, like, it blows know? my mind because that's not. But that's, anything. you know, they're, gen- you know, they're tr- trying to gentrify all these neighborhoods you know yeah. which means like let's get rid of the brown people and put white people in there, i always think of the know? uh the boys in the hood quote where uh the guy he's morpheus and fucking <laughs> so he's morpheus from matrix but like when morpheus is walking the two the two boys and he's like do you know why there's a liquor store in every corner and like he's like he explains the gentrification process and how they keep them all in and how they keep them all like uh what's the word not dormant um docile like so on just keep yeah. they keep them in like certain neighborhoods whether well, I mean, it's like black or mexican or i mean look man well, rich you know, people slavery get and shit you know that they didn't want slaves to read and write you know because yeah. it's easier to control an uneducated person man but, and that goes know? exactly back to what i said earlier it was like kind of like if i did want to fucking start something going on i would go to that source i would tap into a source where it is it's uneducated it's probably poor it's probably people but you know looking for you, something. You know what's crazy, man? It's like, you think, I, I don't, I'm not special. I'm not any different than anybody else, you know. But I, when I think of how many times I've, like, been so close to death and should have died or, you know, whatever. Just, I'm still here for whatever fucking yeah. reason, you know. Um I always think, man, you know, it's like, it's because I had great friends like Bob or different people yeah. that were in my life and fucking supported me when in my weakest points or in places where like, I, there was no light to see, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and so because of that, you know, and I'm internally grateful for that, you know, yeah. and, but you also think like, for me, I think about all the people, man, that don't have that support. Like, think of, like, you know, I've had people come up to me with tears in their eyes, crying, you know, old bands that I played with telling me, man, you know, they, thank you for writing that song, you yeah. know, because it means so much to me, you know, because they had been molested or beaten or whatever, you yeah. know, and it provided them some sort of comfort or solace. The way Fade to Black did all those years ago for me that, yeah. you know, like really launched me in the direction of what I feel that is the only thing I can do. I have I have no choice. Yeah. I have to do it. It's like a calling for me, you know. And and so um but I think about all these people that are lost, the man that you know, the people that didn't get the help, the yeah. people that didn't have the good friend there to fucking at the right time to say just the one thing that you needed to get through that moment. <laughs> the that blind one. guy on the bus. Right, man. Um, but that's it. That honest to God, man, yeah. I sat on the couch the other day alone because I've been sitting here alone because she, she's gone on tour or whatever. I was like going, fuck man, I have so much. Like I'm I, like I can f- I can fix the problems I have now. Like because I like I literally have brought myself to a place where like I um I don't care. There's nothing. That I just it's like <laughs> he doesn't. Ev- everything's fine now. Like you know yeah. like like yeah. I I I talk I talked uh, during the week, but I was like 
I like, yeah, I'm having an issue, a back issue. In case anyone's just tuning in, like I, I am having a back. But if I was in the mental place I was two years ago, I'm fucked. Yeah, I'm done for. Like so. Whereas now I'm like, eh, I'll fix it. I have, I've, I've had the exact same friend like help me. Yeah, and just the right people around me, the 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 partner to support me in whatever I want to do as well. Like artistically, I'm like, Jesus, like the thank fuck those simple things fell in line for me because god only fucking knows what would have happened well i mean it you know it's every decision has a consequence you know and and life changes by the seconds yeah it does, I mean? there, there is a like because there's no scientific way but there's a part of that that does make me think jesus maybe look is a real thing because there is no there's no the guy that installed my carpet <laughs> he is a real guy <laughs> That's yeah. Moses put my glass in for my shower, and Jesus installed my carpet. Hey, Jesus, we had this conversation. I'm telling you, his name. I said, "What's your name?" He said, "Jesus." I said, "All right." God damn it. He was a nice guy. Yeah. Great carpet too. He did a good job. Sweet. Well, shout out. Put that shout out. Good carpet. <laughs> but no, like I don't know what <coughs> life decisions or consequences uh, um, reward people with. Exactly what you said, like those. The good friend that shows up, the partner that shows up in your life, the the cat, the dog, the fucking whatever. Because like you could be a shitbag person and still have all the good people in your life and still have the cool dog and the car and the house and all that as well. But I think then like where are you mentally and where is your consciousness and what do you feel every day if you feel anything at all? Like you know, whereas I feel more grateful because yeah. I'm fucking walk as fuck bro <laughs> i'm not walk at all i'm just like i'm a walk to my life and my surroundings and my feelings and my energies and what makes me fucking happy and the people that make me happy and now i'm slowly getting more control of it because i now i can invite people to be part of my life and be yeah. happy about it and that's well it's good man it's good to be grateful you know you got to be grateful um you know it's funny like bob bob one time you know i uh I have a Bob story as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I don't really have much family, anything like yeah. that. Most everyone's dead. You know, um, I have a couple siblings that I talk to and very, very small family at this point, you know, and some that I, I'll never talk to in my life, you know what I mean? Because they just, whatever crazy they're doing over in their village, I'm not doing in my yeah, village. Exactly. So it's just the fucking way it is. But, um, but, uh, you know, I was, this is years ago, Bob, Bob said to me, you know, cause it's like, because you didn't have things or what I didn't have things or whatever. Like I, I said to him one time, I was like, man, you should be grateful. You got parents that fucking care about you, man. Yeah, yeah. You know that, you know, whatever. And he's like, yeah. Uh, you know, like it, it's weird. Like sometimes things get, you just need to be pointed out for people, you know? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and. You know, I'm whenever I seen like people that had like good families and people that, you know, love them and, and you know, it's like I'm like happy for them. Yeah, you me know too. what I mean? Yeah. And and I'm, I from always, a, I'm from a broken violent home yeah. as well. So and so like, I always would think like, Man, good for you, you know, or and you know, if ever the conversation came up I'd want them to know, like, man, be grateful. You yeah. know what I mean? That you got these people in your life that are paying the ass for it, yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah. But or are there supportive or whatever, yeah. you know, cause when you don't have that shit in your life, man, like it's, it, it's, it can be daunting, you know? And, and so that's when people get into gangs yeah. or bands or what, whatever it is and whatever your path winds up being, you know, you know, that changes from that point on. So it's being grateful, man, is definitely a good thing, man. Yeah. Knowing that you got, something good in your life man is important it's funny last night i went for like dinner with ashley's parents just me and them oh really yeah so because i was like oh they're coming up i'm like hey, call go and then she and calls me and she goes, or i'm so sorry uh, greg that, yeah uh, oh gary yeah, 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 yeah. he's hilarious <laughs> i was like so sorry like you know were they annoying and i was like dude like the exact perspective was like no nah, it was like a family it was it was cool like it was like i didn't have that so yeah that's fucking neat. Like I embrace that any moment. I can be like just like kind of soaking a bit of a real like some normal normal shit. It's just weird. Like so yeah, because I grew what's up normal with my mother. Like and she was on fucking prescription mother. meds and fucking drinking and not knowing that they don't go hand in hand. Like 
Oh, they go hand in oh, hand. Oh, this, this is like the <laughs> early nineties Ireland. You're not told about this shit. Well, uh. you know, and like and this uh, abusive fucking childhood doesn't whatever. It's like, but so going to hey have a family dinner in a happy environment and have a lot. I'm like, yeah, that sounds fucking hilarious. Let's do that. Like, like good uh, food, laughs. Yeah, yeah. Oh what my are you god. Talking about yeah. same, but same with the first like the first Christmas I had here with them. Like, and it was just like. It was a family sitting around, like, acting all family. And I thought I was in, like, a fucking one of those Hallmark movies or whatever. And I'm going, everyone's happy and, like, <laughs> ha, 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 look at this. Amazing. I'm, like, going. It was so uncomfortable yeah. in the nicest way. I was, like, going, Jesus. It, it definitely, for me, like, it can definitely be uncomfortable when you're around something where it's, like, it, and it's uncomfortable because it's just, it's foreign. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just, like. It, it is nice. I've it's seen nice. the Cosby show. I, li- I like, I'm into hey. that, but then you find out what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> he's doing you the know? cameras are off. Yeah. He's like, it ruins everything. <laughs> I just don't want to know about that part. Like, that's yeah. all. Like, so, but uh, I don't know. What well, were going on for two hours? Holy. Fuck. I don't know if anyone will even listen this far. Yeah, but I don't know. I want to know. Um, I, cause I said uh, another guy came on like a few podcasts ago, Andre. He's cool. He's like this young guy. He's been helping me out with all the band stuff. Cool. So he does all like my the distribution and stuff and gets all my shit ready and. Does all the shirts and everything. everything so he's fun. pissed at you right now because you're not doing dick. I ain't doing hurts. dick. I just come up, yeah, I come up with the ideas. He does the work, um, but he helped me out with everything. Um, but he came on and then he left, and I was like, ah, oh, actually, dude, you know, I I gave like him the open door policy. He's like, you know what? Just come back in, do any podcast you want, whatever you want. Is like, nice. that the same cool. with you? Do I want you? Oh, to, thanks, man. Anytime Appreciate you're fucking it. bored, just please, because like it's endless amounts of conversation and yeah, talking about bullshit or. We'll try to drag Bob over here real quick or oh, something. Oh, that'd be great. Some it's good just stories. Best story. Like even like when we were You have to put like black bars over our eyes <laughs> when we're telling the stories. No, like uh, uh, like to, the A C D C cover, yeah. dirty deeds, you know. To finish up this one, like when we were moving when I was moving in here and you came over and Bob came over and just everyone helping with boxes and then like Ashley's parents are here and then I left for a minute and came back. Um, Can you fucking believe he left yeah. while we're moving his shit? I was no. probably carrying more boxes. <laughs> But uh, when, I, when I came back into the room, uh, it was like you and Bob and, and Gary just sitting there with his like mouth open, the stories coming out. And he's like, look at me going, is this real? It's like, it's like, it's like oh, these guys haven't even started. Like, oh, so, man. So, we'll, we'll, so like, we'll get you and Bob back or whatever. Well, like we hang out anyway, but like so, I just so I like ones. sharing it with everybody and yeah. things doing shit like this is therapeutic for me. And it makes me actually like talk to people and hang out. And like Ashley texts me earlier to tell you like tell tj thanks for taking my hermit boyfriend out of the house or whatever. <laughs> it's like god damn it yeah, like my pleasure but it's like i don't know i enjoy it and i think it's good for me as well like so um cool for whatever you get out but i don't give a fuck because awesome. you know i'm a selfish motherfucker but uh music news or anything related yeah, to that um or? well my my band the elite um we just finished up uh finished up mixing and mastering our record our debut like awesome. full length we did a ep a few years back put it out on itunes uh war war three ep it is um so we just finished up got the mastering everything's done uh we're in the process of working on a video for first release you showed the um, videos, concepts. and uh yeah so we're excited um i don't want to say anything about it want to nah. you know it'll be awesome it, right? it's gonna be uh, we we're real stoked on it man it's gonna be killer i'll share it um, online yeah awesome so we're hoping um maybe by mid next week we're gonna have some initial like concept stuff and within like four or five weeks we should have it done and then we're just in the process of trying to figure out how we're going to release the record you know we're trying to shop for you know labels and management yeah. and stuff like that you know um i mean you know the guys in the band is uh, rob arnold he's the he's a guitar player from chimera and um and then Austin Diamond, who was in Bleed the Sky, and then also in Chimera at a point. And yeah. Currently is playing in uh, Devil Driver. So, yeah. Great um, drummer. So oh. I saw him in Glendale. Uh, oh, yeah. With, with Devil, Devil Driver. Devil, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a fucking beast, man. So he's yeah. one of a kind. So, yeah, we're just getting ready to, to put the album out and, you know, getting excited, to, you know, get in to start rehearsals and and do some shows so Sick. hopefully soon maybe in the summer we'll have some shows lined up <laughs> my back is better i'll yeah. play with you <laughs> yeah fuck yeah no i gotta do uh, that it'd be great yeah so we're just uh, getting that together um anyone wants to check some shit out uh you can go to rob and um look for the elite there um i have an elite fan page um tj frost hq on on facebook i'll tag you um 
Then I have an Instagram, and I'm terrible with the social media shit. I'm trying to get better. You so. sent me a video <laughs> that <you>. I posted. <laughs> so like, ooh, I'm, I'm like, a fucking what? moron. Yeah, yeah. no, that's great. Okay, so, <laughs> so I'll put all. I'll just put the tags in, and people cool. can follow awesome. whoever gets to the end of a fucking Killer. two hour podcast Appreciate or like that. Like so, uh, whenever I don't care if we do podcast 14 and you're still the next guest on give a shit whatever awesome. like so but cool. i'll be oh i'm getting paul markham on oh yeah yeah paul have some <laughs> oh, good shit oh dear <laughs> and a lot of weed probably yeah okay all right we're out uh the music Oop. is going to start rolling in now i'm jimmy trigger that's tj this is the trigger man podcast thanks for listening love peace thanks and chicken listening. grease peace that's where i pretend to do something mm-hmm. no i'm kidding <laughs> 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 Move, motherfucker, get out of